All right, it is uh, time for us to get started. It is now about five after the hour of nine o'clock. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Ramona Jackson Johnson, Chairwoman of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, and welcome to the 2022 mid year workshop, uh, budget workshop for the Douglas County Board of Commissioners. Uh, certainly, as I call the meeting to order, I would like to recognize uh, my fellow commissioners. So we have District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. We have District 2 Commissioner and Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson present this morning. We have uh, District 3 Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Tarina Carthen. District 4 Commissioner, Commissioner Ann jones Geiger this morning. And then, of course, I just um, acknowledge myself. I certainly would like to introduce the executive captain as well this morning. We have with us our deputy county administrator, Fred Perry. Thank you for being here. Tiffany Stewart Stanley, who is our assistant county administrator. And we have our dynamic finance team this morning. And certainly, again, I know we've met uh, Ramona Bivens, who's our new chief financial officer, CFO. And certainly would love for her to stand again just so we can acknowledge it and give her a huge We have our um, David Corbin, who's our chief financial advisor this morning with us. And we have Rosalind Miller, who is our um, acting uh, director of finance. And then we have our attorney, certainly last month, but not least, Michael Coleman. Thank you for being here this morning. And then our clerk, Lisa Watson. Thank you, our assistant deputy clerk, Sherry Mathis. And then, of course, the legislative aide and uh, which for Commissioner Rob Robinson this morning, and then our IS team to support us and our communications team. Thank you, Ryan. Um, this morning we are presenting to the Board of Commissioners. Certainly we will have a presentation from our Deputy County Administrator and Assistant County Administrator briefly for the Board just so to give you an idea of what your day looks like and a financial presentation from our CFO and then also from our um, C uh, Chief Financial Advisor and Rosalind Miller will provide a financial uh, cash flow report. And then also we have a, a financial overview. And then I've asked the tax commissioner and the tax and the chief appraiser to come in and give you an update as well. And then last certainly but not least, uh, Chris Pumphrey will be here today to give us an economic uh, development update. Um, I, I'm so honored that you all came in today to, for our mid-year retreat. Uh, this is part one. We may have to come back for part two. We, we may not be anticipating part two, but just may need to, uh, to bring this back probably uh, a week from now, just to go over a few other things. But we have, uh, the executive team have compiled quite a bit of information that I believe will be beneficial to you and will not uh, just take up your time today. It is something that I believe will uh, leave you with um, at least some food for thought. And then as we make decisions about our millage rate, and certainly we'll look at our digest. So uh, with no further ado, I would just like again to welcome everybody again to our mid-year workshop, budget workshop, and I uh, look forward to a great day. With no further ado, uh, certainly I will bring up Frederick Perry and Deputy County Administrator, Tiffany Stewart Stanley, and also Fred and Adam Deputy County So we have the floor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Madam Chair. Hopefully, everybody is doing well. David, good to see you, brother. Um, oh, uh, you know, I was telling Madam Guider that I'm excited this morning, excited about the information that we're about to share, the, uh, uh, the things that we're about to go through, because it gives us a snapshot of Douglas County, gives us uh, a good visual of where we are on this day and time. So uh, I'm going to, I won't talk. I won't. <laughs> So good morning, everyone. I'm also excited to be here today. So I know we're here for the financials, and we're going to get to that in, um, very briefly. But all the directors and everybody teased me. I've always got to do something with the strategic plan because I like to keep that at the forefront of the mind of the community, of our employees, because it's so important. Um, it's been such a great asset to us over the past year. So one of the things that we came up with, uh, with the help of MMI, Media Miracles, and our communications team, was just to come up with a series of videos where we highlight each of the strategic priorities. And you guys have your little uh, cards there. 
what we want to do is we want to take the people, we kind of have people who own certain priorities. So for example, recreational facilities and programs, that would be Gary Dukes, Pasuela Gilcrest, Lindsay, Lindy Moore. You'll see, we're gonna see a series of videos where we just kind of highlight some of the things that we are doing with the strategic plan. So today we'll do our first video, you're our first audience, and the first one is on Transform Douglas County, which is the one that we got on right now. Yeah. So, Elliot, if you will roll the video. The Douglas County Board of Commissioners approved Douglas Forward 2025 in August of 2021, and the county's administrative leadership team has been working diligently to effectively implement the strategic plan. Douglas Forward 2025, a five-year strategic plan, serves as our guiding document from the Board of Commissioners when setting priorities on the administrative side and allows the county to operate in a unified manner. The county's leadership team is enthusiastic about Douglas Ford 2025. This represents a year of work assessing our county and hearing from our citizens about what they want to see in Douglas County and their local government. Our Board of Commissioners have provided a clear directive to ensure our sixth goal of our strategic plan, transform Douglas County government. We are committed to Douglas County being a place where citizens trust that their government responsibly manages their resources, provides exceptional services, and equitably represents them. The county has enhanced our communication technology to ensure that all citizens are always informed about the ongoings in Douglas County and that they have access to all pertinent information regarding their local government. We are working hard to put a greater emphasis on constituent services by initiating our Douglas County Citizen Experience Survey. Now this is to get feedback on their service experience and the quality of the county's programs and services. We've developed the Douglas County Leadership Academy. Their inaugural class graduated 35 leaders and we are in the process of establishing the Douglas County Emerging Leaders Program to cultivate the rising talent within our organization. We also have developed an online training portal that was created by Lionheart Consulting, where every Douglas County employee has access to training modules that can assist them with enhancing their skill set to better serve the citizens in our community. We want to make sure that everyone understands what the workplace culture is here at Douglas County. We are encouraging team building initiatives across the divisions to help develop a strong workplace culture where trust is established and expectation and goals for our employees are clear. We have started to shift to more of a team approach and we're encouraging working across divisions to collaborate so that our employees are engaged and feel connected. For example, we now have our senior services working together with transit to better serve our seniors' transit needs. We are already starting to see the benefits of a greater collaborative spirit and maximizing the county's resources by using a team approach. From an operational standpoint, we are implementing key performance indicators to achieve our objectives, like continuously improved process effectiveness, being responsible stewards of county resources, and leveraging technology to modernize and ensure full utilization of county facilities. This is an exciting time here at Douglas County, and I couldn't be prouder of the work that our team is doing. And as a result of Douglas Ford 2025, we are putting the infrastructure in place to efficiently and effectively ensure the success of our community for generations to come. It's truly rewarding to lead a diverse and innovative team to transform the Douglas County government and to continue to make our citizens our number one priority and to work hard every day to ensure the vision of the Board of Commissioners and the needs of the community are both met. Very good. So, as I stated earlier, that's just in a, a that's the first in a series. So, you'll I think the next one we're going to do is public safety. After that, you'll see. So, you'll be you'll have your sheriff, you'll have your fire chief. So just kind of the people who own them. Because we want to keep the strategic plan at the forefront of the mind of our citizens, our employees, and make sure people know that it is our guiding document. And we have been so fortunate to have it to help us along our journey over the past year. So 
That is all that I have. I will turn it over to Mr. Perry. He has a couple quick slides for you, and then we'll turn it over to the finance team. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, yeah, so Elliot, if you could bring that up for me, just a little something to uh, uh, expound on the video that we just had. We are looking to transform uh, Douglas County government one goal at a time. All of the goals that we have uh, set out in the strategic plan, we want to fulfill and actually address each one of those. Uh, next slide. And I just wanna give you all just a snapshot of, of the Douglas County demographics. These are, what, these are the, uh, the de demographics that we're dealing with currently. Average age of 45, so you know, we're not, we're not doing too bad there. We do have an 88 year old that works with us. Yeah, still working. Youngest is 16, and of course they're, uh, they're down in the Parks and Recreation Department, and then everybody in between. So that's, uh, that's kind of what we're dealing with right now. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that we have an 88 year old working with us. That, that shows that, uh, that we are, you know, take everybody into account if they want to continue to work. Douglas County is open for business. Next slide. We are taking uh, a very team approach to this, uh, to the Board of Commissioners and Madam Chair. We want you all to understand that we are relying on one another. Uh, we are opening up the lines of communication. We have our executive team, as you see here, uh, led by myself and Tiffany. Uh, we, we get together on a monthly basis. We talk about all the relevant issues that are going on collectively as well as in our, in, in our individual departments. And we try to make sure that that information cascades down to uh, the, uh, the leadership team as a whole, meaning all of our department, uh, department heads. Next slide. These are the, uh, the other teams that we have developed here. County leadership team, the grant management team, uh, public engagement, which uh, Tiffany and her team, our customer service team are doing an excellent job. We just launched the uh, constituent services survey. survey yes. To, uh, to garner information from the public to see exactly how, what their experience is once they come to the courthouse. This is information, I think this is unprecedented. This is something that Madam Chair has been big about uh, since taking office. What's, what, are your, what are your experiences when you come to the courthouse? Are you leaving angry, more angry than when you came? <laughs> you know, we'll never know, but we're well on our way to, uh, to have that information too. And I just want to say about these teams, these teams are across the county, across division. So the customer service team, we're taking the best from every department, every division, bringing them together to talk about, you know, customer services experiences, what we can do better, you know, how are they successful in customer service. The public engagement team consists of, consists of people from across the county who engage the public. We have, it's definitely communications, intergovernmental affairs, external affairs. We all work together to make sure that if there's any big event like September Saturdays or something of that nature, we're working together to make sure that that event is a success, not in silos and, and have a team over here, a team over there. Um, the grant management team, grant coordination team, that team is everybody who deals with grants in the county. We come together, let, that's led by Jill Hobson, talk about what we can do better for grants in the county as a team. They're, they're sharing information, they have listservs. So we're really doing things now to make sure that this county understands we have to work together to be successful and we have to be Team Douglas. One of the things that, uh, as you all know, Tiffany and I just uh, received our certified public management uh, uh, certification. I was about to say degree. <laughs> a certification from uh, Carl Vincent Institute. One of the big things that, uh, one of the big takeaways from that whole experience was, um, you know, as an organization, uh, they gave the analogy of a bus and having the right people on the bus and not necessarily just having the right people on the bus, but in the right seat. You know, we have to have the right people for the right job, doing the right thing, and, and aimed in the right direction. And uh, as Tiffany just mentioned, all of the people that we have on these various teams, they, they've just been wait, kind of waiting in the wings. And we've been tapping, uh, putting um, uh, opportunities out there for them to step up and serve and lead, and they've stepped up in a tremendous way. So very excited about that. And that leads me to our next uh, slide about getting the right people on the bus we have started to fill key positions within the county. Uh, our new human resources uh, director, Tisha Carter, is a, a, a beast with creativity. Uh, she is just creative and just, uh, I'm, I'm excited for 
mold department and where it's going to go through the roof. You always hire someone who you feel is more creative and better than you. So uh, I think I've succeeded in that regard. Uh, uh, Transit Service uh, Director Ron Roberts. Uh, Ron has been over at our planning and zoning department for years now and then he opened up. I, I didn't know that he was actually in that area before. So, uh, so we actually, there's another example of how we have these, uh, these skill sets within the county that we are reaching out and uh, we're digging down within, uh, within the uh, county to find where these skill sets are and bringing them and putting them in the right seat. So next slide, we have uh, our new print shop supervisor. And if you haven't met uh, Mark Poole, he is, uh, I mean, this is just, I, I think that our print shop operation has went to the next level and you will see that uh, I've had him since he's been here just to doing a, a complete assessment of the mailroom, the print shop, our equipment there and so on and so forth. Now there's an ask that's going to be coming. <laughs> so you know at the end of all of this there's an ask. But um, but if we want to if we want to win, if we want to field a competitive team, these are the things that's necessary for us to do. And we also have in our presence our, our new chief financial officer, Ms. Ramona Billings, and we have been uh, just developing a bond with her and bringing her up to speed so that, uh, that she'll be successful in her role as our chief financial officer. And last but certainly not least, we have our new procurement director, uh, Latanya Ammons, as well as our planning and zoning manager, Allison Duncan. And it's all about developing the bench and when I say that, developing that next level of leadership, uh, when we moved Ron Roberts over to Transit Services, Allison Duncan was right there to move up. And we want that in every single department within the county. So by September, um, definitely by uh, November, we want each department to have identified a second person in charge. So if they are out and about, if they have a doctor's appointment, the operation does not stop. Services continue, all right? So we don't want things to, uh, to cease just because that number one is not in, the, uh, not in the seat for the day. So these are just a snapshot of some of the things that we got going on. Tiffany, I don't know. No, I think we just turn it and we're ready yeah. to get to the well, money. So we want to be ready to get to the money. Uh, we are in a good financial position, as you'll see. And uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Madam Chair. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Deputy County Administrator Greg Perry and Assistant County Administrator Tiffany Stewart Stanley. Certainly, I want to just uh, publicly thank you all for what you've done the last seven months to keep the ship in the middle of the ocean. You've done a fantastic job, phenomenal. We've done some great things within the last seven months. Uh, you've produced, you've been very productive. Our staff morale has increased, in my opinion, by 100%. They're all smiling again. And I don't know if you're all putting some, what in there, I don't know what you're putting in there, cool, <laughs> but it's working. And I thank you every day. I, I don't take you all lightly. I've watched you uh, for the last six months do two things. You've juggled the organization, plus you had an enormous amount of schoolwork and I know this was, a, Tiffany, you mentioned at one point it was more challenging than your law degree. So uh, I thank you all for doing that and congratulations again on your graduating, um, graduating from your certified public management. Uh, certified public management. Well, you're all big time now, all these titles, but congratulations. And project management. Congratulations and thank you all for what you continue to do for the organization. I can see it, we're working on the key performance indicators and you are holding the staff and our um, leadership team accountable because uh, we are in the pursuit of excellence and we will not stop until we reach our goals. So I, I'm just really appreciative and wanted to highlight you all in front of the board of commissioners this morning to let you know that I've watched you all grow just in a matter of seven months from little tiny babies to now I'm thinking, uh oh, they're adults, but you all have done a great job and your leadership skills are just definitely honed and polished and I, I know you will do great things as you go forward. Board Commissioners, next we have coming forth is our a presentation from our um, Chief, uh, our County Chief Financial Officer and Terminus will provide us as well with the cash flow report. So um, 
Are we starting first, Ms. Pickens, with you, Mrs. Pickens? Sure. Okay. All right, you have the floor. And I'll just introduce them. A duet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have, Dave, we'll have David. Good Simon. morning. Good morning. Um, so Roslyn is going to actually do the cash flow, and we're going to tag team on the um, budget review because um, I'm still trying to figure out where everything is. But I put together last night a PowerPoint presentation and sent it to her in the wee hours of the morning. So hopefully some of the information that's included on here is what you all are looking for. And if not, we'll get it right next time. So I'm gonna give the mic to Rosalind and she's gonna go over the cash flow, um, the budget review, and I'll do the tax digest piece and talk about the millage rate um, and some of the public hearings that we're gonna have to have and everything. You want me to do the clip? I'll do my okay. land. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Whatever you want. Okay. Well, well, whatever you want. I feel bad to have you working it up. Doing my clip. Doing my clip. Yes, I'm bad. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Say it was encouraging to see 88 and still working, yeah, so I have something to look forward to. But also, I am, you know, the youngest. I was around that age, 16, so I have a long wow. But um, I guess first we'll go over the cash flow, and I believe you have the cash flow in your um, packet. It's yellow. It's um, landscape, and it has a yellow top. The most important thing about the cash flow, if you recall that this year for 2022, that um, Douglas County did not utilize a TAN, did not use a TAN, and the cash flow reflects the cash um, is your ending balance is looking good for cash flow flow and not needing a tan. Your lowest um, projection of cash available would be projected at in September. And again, this is a projection and that would be 7.8 million. And then usually around that time, you're usually in the negative and that's why you have to um, utilize a tan. So for 2022, cash flow is good and we're still strong without needing a tan. Okay. Any questions about the cash flow? Yeah. Yes. All right, so, um, all right, so September. Um, so what we're saying is that that's when we need it. Do you have the cash to make it through the end of the year when the taxes are coming? Like that gap, we talked about it earlier this year, that we should be okay. Can you? Yes. So let's start with September, yep. where your lowest um, cash balance would be $7.8 um, Right. Um, and then in October, with your expenditures that occur and also you're receiving some taxes early, um, payments for your um, tax, property tax. So that has increased your um, balance a little for the month of October. So your ending cash balance would be 9.5. And then November, that's um, where you receive majority of your tax um, payments um, due to the tax bills on the due date. And so your cash balance jumps to 38.1 million. And again, the month of December, 49.8 million. And again, this is um, projected. All right, so your, your cash balance is um, revenue that came in minus my expenses. That's what's left over. That is correct. Got it. Okay, keep on. Oh, yes. So this next slide gives you uh, uh, the I guess for the charts, we'll give you, I'm, sometimes I'm, I like to look, you know, look at charts, um, but you do have in your packet the numbers. And this, it's a very colorful um, page, and 
You saw this last year. And what's important about it is that we're breaking out recurring and non-recurring. And as you recall, the recurring is revenue that you receive um, always, like taxes, your laws, um, TAV tax. And that's the amount per your policy for based off of recurring. Um, you look at your prior year ending, um, ending um, budget, and remember the 104, um, $104 million that we continue to um, mention that you can't go higher? Well, that's what your recurring revenue is. And that's what um, your 2022's budget was um, based off of, was the 104.6. However, um, the non-recurring revenue, um, you have the ARPA funds that, um, are paid ARPA funds for the 5% for um, non-public safety, 10% for public safety, and that's um, year 2022. And in year 2023, you have 5% non-public safety and 5% public safety. And if you recall, in year 2024, ARPA will not, you will not have a non-recurring for ARPA, meaning that that amount that's covering those um, expenditures or those paid incentives, they would have to be in your recurring revenue. And if you see, you're only at 104, and we're estimating, if you go to the last column of um, 2002, we're estimating, again, because that's what your budget was based off of, the 104.6 million. However, you have 7 million in non-recurring. So you would need to make up recurring revenue of seven million to make to um, balance your budget of um, one eleven. If anticipating going into twenty twenty three and twenty twenty four, either you save that seven million for twenty twenty three because you have um, non recurring, but in twenty twenty four you're going to need at least seven million or higher because. Each time you do a budget, you anticipate, you know, inf inflation costs five percent, and that's operation, not expend, not on um, salaries, but just in your operational um, cost. So um, you're looking at a little more than seven um, million that you would need in year 2024 as recurring revenue. So the the um, 111 million. Does that incorporate the 5% for inflation, or is that just the total that you included for um, the, <coughs> the salaries? It's and just the salary, that is correct. So you gotta add 5% to that 111 to actually give us what we will need to operate and include inflationary costs. That's correct, okay. yes. Yeah. And um, comparing 2022's um, budget, when you're looking at um, the amended budget with the expenses, um, your expenditures for um, the month of July, really close. Um, all the departments, you can um, see that you do have good leaders. Um, everyone is looking at their budget, watching their budget, because you're not under budget. You're right on target for your 2022 um, budget. Ashlyn, um, why were the revenues, property tax and LOS oh, lost? <laughs> and even the TABT tax for 2021, so much higher, and then it went back down. For 2021, that's actual, for the 2022 amended, that's just, that's a budget. That's um, what we're projecting. But of course, you know, we're looking for it to um, be a, a lot higher in the eight millions. Because if you look at actual uh, for your July, you're at 4.4. .4. Okay. Yeah, and an 11.6 um, for your loss. So your amended column for 2022, that, that's just budgeted. Okay. 
And the next, um, the next important, oh, yeah, the sun balance, yeah, that's it. The next is, um, is the fun balance and so the next is your fun balance and just a refresher of uh, your fun balance policy so for your and at the bottom in the black, it identifies your unassigned and, re, and defining un, unassigned. Remember that um, funds that can um, fund your operation, so it's not restricted. It's not. It's um, we've removed out any obligations that um, you have, like outstanding POs. So um, the total is about forty-two million estimated for um, 2022. However, if you eliminate your outstanding POs and some of your capital projects um, that have not started yet, but we've you know, encumbered um, those amounts, your unassigned is 29.6 million. And with your fund balance, it states that um, your unassigned fund balance exceeds 15% of expenditures, then 25 of the excess funds um, are to be placed for um, future capital. But if you recall earlier during the year, um, you also added for salary increases to recruit and keep public safety employees. So you're saying we spent some of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're gonna have to decide if you wanna break it because estimated you'll have about three million and it was discussed that you would do it half and half, like 1.5 for capital and 1.5 for your um, salaries. But of course, that will reduce your um, capital budget. And um, when doing the survey for your CIP, there was um, a total of 30 million that were not was not eligible for SPLOP. So um, you'll see during the budget process that you'll see about $30 million um, dollars worth of projects that has come from the departments that would have to be, you know, allocated out of the $1.5 million or if you choose to do the total $3 million. Does that make sense? I think that's it. And the um, percentages, too, and... Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I? No, but to your point, you, you mentioned um, $30 million worth of uneligible SPLOS projects that will be funded through, I guess, fund balance, wherever. Right. The pot. So, and we only got $3 million just for the sake of this conversation. So it would take us 10 years to get a staff stuck. It would take me a decade, just in a straight line. With no growth with that additional revenue, it's going to take us that long. And so back to priorities and setting expectations, it's just, okay, guys, we, we recognize this. It's not only with our internal, but also the external. You have to set expectations. Oh, no, I'm, Everybody here? I, I can get him on camera. Okay, so. you can, but I'm not sure, David. Uh, yeah, David, were you able to? No, I'm not. I, I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. I was just talking to us. Did y'all get? Well, y'all, well, yes. Yes. Did y'all understand <laughs> what I'm saying? Did that make sense? More of a, uh, a, a point of reference uh, to reiterate the fact that okay, we got thirty million dollars worth of projects that are uneligible for this SPLOS. Uh, and put transportation to the side for some just just in general. And if we only got three million dollars that we were playing with just in general per year, that assumption, straight line, that would take you ten years, a decade. To be able to help, okay, I'm gonna give y'all all this money. We're gonna appropriate this amount of money over time. It'll take us a decade to get there. That assumes that list doesn't grow. Is that, David? That's correct. Uh, I, I just, I knew it. I just wanted to see what y'all was gonna say, but uh, <laughs> I'm just saying the expectations. Okay. Shake those trees and get some more money off those trees outside. Yes, we're fine. Keep going. So, if I if I can add for one second, yeah. Never had a budget. 
that was designed to fund capital expenditures in the first place. Right? You never had that. So now at least you have again, I can only go back to I can go back to 2016 and 2017. If you remember, we got down to a point where your fund balance was about 10%, which was the minimum operating requirement. Now you're at um, you know, that's roughly about $10 million. Now you're at close to 30%. So you do have more capacity to do more projects, but it's never going to be near with how long that list is. It's never going to get there. It's just, just not, you don't fund, you're not, you're not, the county's not set up to fund the capital budget in that matter. No, and, and to your point, so right, you got more capacity, now you want to go into, you're going to burn through the cash. Um, that fund balance. So it's, a, it's, it's getting rid of your safety net. And now you're going to have to go get back on TANS because, I mean, again, we're talking about real cash out that's going out. So how are you going to manage your payroll and everything else without taking a loan and, and, and making your, your revenue match? How do you get there? That's a good question. I mean, that's a real good question. So I, I was looking at data late last night. So all of the SPLOS projects that, you, that, that have been done. So you build a fire station, hype, you know, hype, let's just pick out a fire station. So that did come out of a, a, a separate source of revenue, which was a SPLOS. You build that station. That's fine because it didn't come out of your capital budget. But now you have an online commitment for the next month. 40 years, right, to fund a million dollars or a million two a year to run that fire station or any other assets that you, that's sort of the mismatch that we're always trying to reconcile within, within finance is when you do build capital projects, it's like me giving you a car and saying, well, here's the car for free that you have to maintain. And that's sort of the challenge that we're running into. So some of that excess that you're getting now in the budget world being used to cover some of the operating expenses for capital items that were acquired with another source of revenue. Uh, no different than ARPA, right? ARPA is the same. So you've got all these non-capital items, these non these non-recurring funding sources that have been used to fund capital items and even operating items that now we're having to balance against going forward. And that's going to be the challenge we're going to have to present to you, each one of you, and you're going to have to decide how that gets, gets, gets addressed. Thank you. At least we know it ahead of time, so we can prepare for it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then to just break it out, uh, your um, the biggest um, portion is your property um, taxes, which is sixty four percent, and this is revenue. And your lost is about twenty percent, and um, your TAVT is eight percent, and then you have other taxes, which is about eight percent. And this is how your um, expenditures um, break out. You can see that um, you have, for general government, you have about 21.77%. Um, and then the next is your um, public works department. And this is expenditures, and this is how it breaks out um, by percentage. Public safety has the largest amount. Yeah, and the gray um, public safety at 34.44%. Okay. Do you have any questions for you? Okay. Um, I'm open for any questions um, regarding the cash flow or your breakout of expenditures and revenue, the recurring or non recurring. And if not. So, in non recurring, I know we set up a grants team on the last budget retreat we had it here a year ago. So, kudos to you, Tiffany, for doing that. However, are we looking at grants as a non-recurring source of income? Have we included that in this? And then from those grants, we always usually have matches. How do we incorporate that into this overall picture? 
because I know we have grants that are out there that we're looking to match. And I know most of the time directors say, oh, we'll match it with salary. But how, how do we incorporate all of that to get a true picture? So yes, the grants are a part of non-recurring revenue, but what, what typically you find is that grants has a separate fund. But with Douglas County, your grants are within your general fund. So I know that CFO Bivens is looking to create a separate okay. fund mm -hmm. <laughs> to move it out. Okay. So therefore, your expenditures and the revenue will be in a separate fund. Okay. So therefore, in general fund, if it's um, you know maybe if it's a match or it depends on how you know the process of um, recording the match, but you won't have any. Um, very seldom would you have non-recurring grant um, funds in your general fund because you'll have a separate fund. Okay. Does that so make sense? that'll help us to account for yeah. it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It, it, help, it would help a lot. Yeah. Yes. You'll have a better, you'll be able to identify what expenditures tied to what um, revenue. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Let, let me, I'm going to add something to this because this, you know, again, being here almost 14 years, seeing two administrations, two different finance approaches. Um, when we came in, everything was in one bucket. And you really couldn't discern what was what. It was like a shell game. And it was, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm like, now we're talking um, financial maturity. Because again, think about it, like, we didn't have any of this back then to my peers that were here back then. You came in the room and decisions were being made, but you had no true visibility. You really just had to go back to prowess. Like, okay, what you're looking at. Now, the system worked regardless. But the fact is that now we can make a, a, a more richer decision, a better decision, because we got better data coming in. And so I applaud, you know, Dave and y'all guys helping us get this financial maturity and just maybe not the look forward to you taking us forward, but that's important. Because then we get caught, we get compromised in our decision making because we, we don't see a whole picture. We don't see everything, right? And in alignment and how it all fits together and stuff. And, and while I intuitively knew it, I didn't have the data. Right, and so the data is key here. So I'm trusting that our data will get better. Yes. 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 And, and, yes. and how we share it, um, and a lot of it is education, not just for us, but also for the public to understand yes. the decision. Because I'm, I'm going back to these priorities, we have to make priorities on some trade-offs. Everything is not going to get funded. Everything is not going to get done. But if we can show how things line up, it'll make it make it a little bit better. So I just want to make that statement for the record. But I look forward to you guys taking this forward. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm gonna say, David. So, let me, <clears throat> before you leave, Roz, I don't have a question for you, but I want to make sure that, I mean, for those that are in the room that were, uh, that are, and that are watching, um, you know, part of what this is all about is context, because I think, you know, when, you're, when things are good, people forget, not that things were ever really bad, but I wanted to make sure that, again, the county, has a great credit rating, right? We're, we're, we're double A. We maintained that through COVID. We had some challenges through COVID in terms of cutting expenses and sort of locking the ship down to make sure that we could prepare for whatever was coming. We were down to nine and a half, ten percent fund balance. You're now looking at a close to a thirty percent fund balance. You've lengthened the maturity. We can now have, have real discussions about priorities, about planning. About what product, no matter what way you decide how you fund things, at least we have the data sets that you were speaking about to be able to make those critical decisions. So I think that the county is in, in the best shape it's probably been in, in a long time in terms of just having information, <coughs> having having the metrics to make you know, better better decisions about where you want to go as a county, even to the point of you were able to would stand what I think is a, a, a generational event, which is COVID. And going forward, I think as long as you don't lose focus, we should be able to manage, you know, people are predicting a recession that's coming, right? Um, uh, there are just some small tweaks going forward. And we've talked about lost in SDS, we've talked about just cost controls, keeping an eye on the ship going forward. All of those things are in place for you now. Uh, and it's good that you have cash, right? Cash sometimes saves the day. 
um, and managing that burden with respect to the taxpayers. How does that look? How do we do that? And how do we keep moving forward? Is what we're really trying to get to a point where we refine it and put you in a position that if major things pop up going forward. I mean, transportation seems to still be a big, a big issue. Um, uh, you know, parks and rec. You know, how do we deal with all those things as we move forward? Are going to be the challenge. You know, we're, I think we're past the point of, you know, how do we pay the bills? It's more about, you know, where do you want to position yourself in the next four to five years? And the rating agencies are still confident that you can do that. Um, the county still to this day uh, has been able to do this without a lot of, with, with, with no, no debt, which is pretty, pretty um, outstanding <laughs> because. It's hard, it's hard to, you know, again, there's nothing wrong with debt, but, um, you know, not having the debt puts you in a position that you have a little more financial flexibility than, than, than your peers around, around the state. So I just want to make sure that everyone gets the context so you don't just see a snapshot, you know, a snapshot in time. Uh, we've come a long way, and I think we're going to continue uh, in this vein going forward. I'll turn it back over to the CFO. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the tax digest and the millage rate. So, what is a digest? It is the total net assessed value of real and personal property, motor vehicles, timber, mobile homes, heavy duty equipment, anything that's like property. The millage rate is a levy that's established by the any government authority for the purpose of financing in whole or in part the operating expenses for that tax and jurisdictions. The rate on the real properties is um, based on one dollar for every one thousand of assessed property value. So what makes up the digest? We have real property which includes any type of real estate, land and buildings, or anything that's erected, um, growing or fixed to land. And we also have personal property, which is your non real estate items like inventories, um, livestock, machinery, and equipment. <laughs> All right, so um, each year the chief appraiser does um, assessments and reassessments and calculates the growth um, for inflation. Um, so for the reassessment, inflationary growth is due again uh, to the reassessment of properties. Um, the chief um, appraiser and the tax commissioner will discuss this later. And then also any new growth due to new or improved property. So if you have a lot of construction going on, new subdivisions, that would be considered new growth. So here we have the five year, the current year levy in the five year history that will be advertised in the paper. Um, so you see 2017 to 2021. And you can see here that our gross digest went um, increased from 6.1 billion to 7.5 billion dollars. Um, the net digest after five the exemptions it was goes from 5.1 billion to six billion dollars. That is um, the tax assessor when I talked to them yesterday. They said it's a 13 to 14 percent, uh, 13 to 15 percent growth. But when I calculated it last night, it showed a 17 percent growth. So it's, we're gonna say 13 to 17 <laughs> percent. Is, is the growth that we've had. Um, this shows maintaining the current net millage rate at 12.563 mills. That would um, generate a gross um, taxes levied of 75.4 million, which is um, about $10 million more than what was levied last year based on the digest. So, oh, I'm going too fast. I'm thinking these are not six. When you compare the prior year to the current year, um, the variance um, on, by category, real and personal, you can see real was $1.4 billion more. There's a decrease of about $5.3 million in motor vehicles. Um, mobile homes increased by $1.4 million. Timber and heavy duty equipment also decreased. And the total digest, the net digest increased by $862 million. Can you repeat that one more time? The net digest increase? Yes, sir. It increased by eight hundred sixty-two point nine million dollars. No, the part that was decreasing. Go back to your. The decreases were in the motor vehicles. Uh, I'm, um, I'm sure everyone is aware by now because this happened a long time ago, when the state changed went to the TAVT. 
So we get TABT funds to make up for that decrease um, because now when you put, they, they eliminate what they call the birthday tax. I still have to pay because I have an older car, but um, if you, when you buy a new vehicle, you pay those taxes up front now, and then when you renew, you just pay the $20. So that's why motor vehicles, we've con continually seen across the state um, that decrease each year, but our TABT should um, make up in the true up should um, cover some of those losses. Uh, no, sir. Timber decreased by about twenty-five thousand dollars, and heavy-duty equipment decreased one hundred twenty-two thousand dollars. Small amounts. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, when um, when we do our net digest for no tax increase, state law requires that we calculate a millage rate, uh, a rollback rate, which is considered revenue neutral. So, when we do that, we don't have to have any. Um, it's considered not a tax increase. However, if we go with a, anything, any millage rate that's above that rollback rate, that's considered a tax increase, and we would have to advertise, um, have three public hearings um, before we adopt that um, millage rate. Here I just show what the uh, millage rate rollback is. Um, it shows the net digest from last year, the reassessment and the new growth and what the net digest is, and that's why I got my 17% 17 change. And um, I understand that the board is wanted to keep or maintain the 12.563 millage rate. If we do that, um, it will be above the rollback rate of 11.927. Um, so if we do that, then that's considered an increase and we would have to have the three public hearings. So how that looks on a tax bill. On a fair market value assessed at $150,000 at 40% assessed value and I did check to see if the homestead bank um, exemption had changed. I got this off of the old PowerPoint from two years ago. So I used the $6,000 that I had, but I got a 54,000 taxable value. When you apply the 12.563 millage rate, that homeowner would pay $678.40 in taxes. If we use the rollback rate of 11.927, that would be $644.06, which is $34.34 difference. Our exemption is a floating homestead. It's floating, oh, okay. That is nothing. Learn something today. I'm still learning. Thank you. So, for the millage rate adoption, again, the county must advertise our current year tax digest in the five year history, which I showed you earlier, um, a week before the adoption. If we're going to roll back the millage rate, we have to place an ad in the paper no later than August 9th for adoption to occur at a special call meeting on August 25th. And uh, that may change. I have talked to Lisa because I think the dates that I have are based on us maintaining the um, current millage, current net millage rate, which is more than the rollback rate. So if we do that, we will have to have three public hearings, as, as I stated earlier. The first and second public hearings are scheduled for August 16th at 10 a.m. during a special call meeting. The second one will be that evening at 6 p.m. during the regular business meeting with the third hearing and the adoption of the millage rate being held on August 25th at a special call meeting. And Lisa, what time was that? I don't remember the time. Was it 10? We have 10 a.m. At 10 a.m. And then also, just as a reminder, um, the counties are required to adopt, uh, do a resolution adopting the Board of Education's millage rate. We don't say that, but we still have to adopt it as part of our adoption, so. To, to that point about school board, did they, was there increase? I'm not sure Commissioner Carthen is saying yes. He was? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. in today's, yesterday and today's paper. Okay. Um, but they did not roll back. So, so they, they did not roll back. Yeah, they have your okay. And that's all I have. Any comments or questions? Does anybody know about the cities? Have they done? I'm not sure. Tiffany's shaking her head. No, I don't know. You don't I mean, know. She doesn't know. She's checking. Check. We can know. check. So, um, I wanted to address something real quick because I was asked, Fred asked, um, Frederick asked me yesterday about the additional funds that um, will be generated if we go with the 12, the current net millage rate. And um, when we did the calculation, like I said, it's $75.4 million. If we do a 95% collection rate, that would give us $71.6 million in taxes um, that we anticipate, that we would anticipate collecting. And currently, I believe Rosalind um, told me that we have $59.5 million budgeted in our current tax um, line item. So that would give us an additional $12 million. And my recommendation for that is that I, I teased, 
I jokingly told Frederick yesterday, well, we need to take that money so we can um, cash that check that we wrote earlier for the pay enhancements. Okay. So I believe, um, I think it was $8 million for this year and an additional $4 million for next year when we do an increase. So that would cover that amount. We wouldn't have to worry about that right. from the down the line. So that would be my recommendation um, for the board to consider um, as you all think about uh, moving forward with the next year's budget. Any Yes, sir. What was that dollar, what was that dollar amount uh, per homeowner and what amount in dollars? I know you got a percentage of uh, 0.36. What is that in dollars to the average homeowner at 150,000 or was that at 300,000 that you used earlier? Um, hold on. If, Based on the rollback, yes. This right here? Yes. So this right here shows on a $150,000 fair market value? Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. Um, 678 at the current millage rate, 644 if we go to the rollback. So if we maintain the current millage rate, it's $34.34 .34 more than if we went back to the rollback rate. Right, so the homeowner would actually save about $34.34, yes, basically. Yes. Okay. 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 All right. Got one. Yes, sir. All right, so that, that, I know you knew, but if you, if you put something on the table, stick with it. So yes, sir. Um, if you, you know, don't tease, don't joke, if you, about um, keep it. Well, that is important, and, and I know you're even, but say it because, yeah, we've got some obligations, we've got some covers, we, we've done some things. And to your point, I'm glad your discernment says, Yeah, we got to pay for that. Yeah. And every meeting we go and we ship something else based on the report, like rug rats, no, shiny objects. Right? You know, guys, we have children. And so it's one of those, like, what, what we're looking for from you is to, to hold us to that. Make us, like, okay, it's y'all call, but you know this. I do that very well, sir. <laughs> I, I just, I mean, we're, we're, we're good, just for the record, not in front of everybody, but just, but just say it, but to stand on your foot. Yes. We just need that right now. Yes, we're sir. in a good place until a day we're saying, you got something to work with now, but it can get away from you. Yes, yes sir. and this when we prioritize. Yep. And stick to our priorities. Okay? Thank you. Right. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Uh, 10 minutes break. Yes. We'll take a 10 minute break. Yes. And uh, next speaker, voice mission, we have our chief financial uh, advisor here, David Corbin, and he's just going to speak about our current uh, environment. And I would love him to talk about the inflation, what's happening on uh, perhaps Wall Street and all the things dealing with Dow Jones, all those things that are related to at the end of the day that impacts the county. As long as no one walks out of here and invests any money, <laughs> we're, we're in good shape. So, uh, good morning, everyone. I appreciate, well, yeah, almost still morning, I guess. Appreciate the opportunity, as always, to be to come before you. Um, you probably have heard a lot of information today. You know, we have details from Roslyn to talk about the millage. The big thing for us going forward in 2023 will be a couple of things, right? You know, 2020, 2021, 2022, we've seen significant growth in expenditures. Some of it is, is inflation, a bulk of a good portion of it's inflation. A good por portion of it is supporting assets that have been previously acquired by the county in terms of capital projects, fire stations. But on, on a consistent basis, What's driving your budget is operating expenses that are coming from payroll. Uh, and that will continue to be as long as you're in the business of public safety. Um, unlike other businesses in this in this country, government is still a place where you touch people, you have to put your hands on people. So technology, savings from technology and all that help, but at the end of the day, you need people to do the job of government, right? And as a result of that, you're always going to be, uh, uh, have growth in expenses. I think inflation is going to continue. Um, right now, we're at roughly a 9% clip. I've argued that it's always been there. It's just that they don't measure it. Uh, you know, they're now measuring it differently than what they had been. So now it's showing up in, in, in a perverse way. I don't think that's going to go down anytime soon. I mean, I think we're going to be 
you know, I think it's persistent and it's going to be there. It may come down in gas prices. It may come down. Um, it may come down in some food prices over a period of time. But generally speaking, even if it's if it's not nine percent and it's seven, I don't think you're going to feel any better about that. So, having said that, how does that really impact what's going to happen in 23 in terms of your lost, you know, uh, sales taxes, property taxes? Because inflation has the, that kind of impact. You know, you saw your digest increase by 17 percent. That's a huge jump for people on a daily basis that have to make that property tax payment. You know, they're now paying more for items in the grocery store. They're now paying more for things. At some point in time, I think balance sheets have been pretty healthy over a period of time. They've got COVID money. People are still sitting on a lot of their balance sheets are pretty strong. But eventually, I think that's going to run out at some point in time. And, you know, we're thinking maybe by the first half, by the end of the first half of 23, we've already started to see data where things are slowing down now. Uh, housing sales are slowing down. You know, the, the third year mortgage right now is at roughly at five and a half percent. That's that's long. That's a far cry from three and a half percent a year at this time. So we're already seeing slowdowns in all areas. Uh, in all areas, it's just not slowing down fast enough. And so what we think is, you're going to get the property tax growth that's already in place. How much yet you decide to keep to fund? Some of the expenses, the inflationary expenses that you've already absorbed is going to be important. But then what are we looking at for the next thing when it comes to slots, loss, what are those collections look like coming in 23 and 24 uh, are starting to be a little, little concern for, for me at this point in time. I have a question. So in terms of that, I mean, we talk about collections and we talk about slowdown and we talk about you know, inflationary. We always, I think, budget at what, 95% collection rate is what the tax collector? Collection rate. Yeah, is that what we still should be looking at or should we? Yeah, I, I think 95%. I mean, the tax commission is not here and I don't want to make the job easier, sound easier than what it is. Most people, you know, again, y'all have been in that. I've argued for a long time that, you know, the escrow mortgages, the escrow is in the mortgage at this point. Right, so as long as people are paying their mortgages, you're going to pick up, you know, the tax commission is going to get have a fairly high collection rate. Well, it's yeah, yeah, so we're going to have a fairly high collection rate. So I don't, I'm not so much worried about so we, do, we don't need to take it like to 92 right. to incorporate, <laughs> but what we think we got, okay, I'm just, I'm just yeah, so I'm not worried about I think the 95 percent collection rate is a pretty, is a pretty good number. Mm -hmm. The last couple of years, even during COVID. We, remember, we lowered it. It came in better than expected. To your benefit, that overage ref is reflected in the BIR and ends up being reflected in the BIR process. That allows you to have to put stuff a little more cushion going on forward, yeah. right? So, um, you know, I think you're going to again get more of that cushion this year. I mean, so, you know, I think uh, CFO Bivens showed you a number of a 10 to 12 million dollars. I think it may be a little bit better than that just because, again, revenue collections, as long as they stay consistent, which I think in this year, people, should, I'm not going to say they should have any problems paying their property taxes, but generally speaking, the balance is pretty good. So having said all that, um, again, I, I talked a little bit earlier, maybe out of context, uh, but I think the county is in a much better place than what it was three or four years ago, part of it was y'all made a tough decision two years ago, I think it was roughly two years ago, mm -hmm. to raise property taxes to address, you know, in, in, to address, you know, you didn't know it, but to, to put yourself in a position to weather a storm that came with COVID. And quite frankly, without the federal government interjecting the cash, it, 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 whether you're Republican, whether you're Democrat, whether you're a monitor, you know, monetary supply side person, whatever it is, I think we all can agree that those dollars were necessary at the time to, to kind of bridge the gap to where we are today. Now we're dealing with some of that overflow because it's caused some of that excess dollars has caused inflation, and we're having to deal with that. Um, we're going to continue to have to deal with that for, for the next couple of years. But that's probably a good problem to have. Having, I'd rather you know, I hate to say it, I'd rather deal with inflation than not have any money at all, and we've got a different a different. Strategy. 
slightly different outlook at this point. So I think we can manage that over time. But um, big picture items for me when it comes to the county, we've got a solid credit rating that's been maintained. Uh, it's probably one of, you're probably one of the better positioned counties in the state from all the clients that we deal with. Your uh, performance actually mimics where we, you know, we represent the state as well, where the state is. You've got a good fund balance. Uh, you've got growth. You still have growth, you know, coming into this county, uh, not just on the, the, the residential side. You have it also on the development side, poised for that. Uh, we've got some issues in transportation that you're going to have to deal with eventually. That's going to continue to come up. That's going to be a big expense. It's always going to be a big, a big, a big expense going forward. Uh, you have very little debt, which puts you in a position that if you needed to borrow money going forward, you have the capacity to do that. Um, and so I'm, I'm really pleased that we've been able over a period of time to move the curve in terms of planning. Again, I just remember four or five years four or five years ago, you know, we, we were having a different discussion. Now we've got enough data, we've got enough context, we've got, you know, um, we've got a pretty good handle on strategic plan on where we need to go and how, you know, at least how we're going to get there. It's up to you to debate how fast you want to get there. But some things, you know, at the end of the day, I've always said to Commissioner Robinson in our, our discussions of, around Finance Committee, in your budget every year, we, we talk about a lot of different things, but it really only boils down to about a nickel, right? For all the because if you're, if you're going to continue to keep the same level of payroll, which is about 65 to 70 percent of your, your expenditures are in payroll and people, the balance are operating costs and pension, you're only really dealing with about five percent of your entire budget every year. But you're really making critical decisions on going forward, and so how do we basically? put something in place that supports you making a good decision about the money that you do have at your discretion at the end of the day. Did we ask you, uh, and then you might have covered this in uh, you know, this government as you speak, but you've seen the county from 10% uh, fund balance and now you said 30. Okay, can hear you. 10% of fund balance now to to, uh, to 30. What what key decisions were made during that time to, to help get us there? You know, how can we continue to move along that trend? Well, it, look, so, so there are two things that were done, and you have to correct me, I think it was 2019, 2020. You had the property tax increase, yeah. but that was also combined with the fact that, um, I'll use Madam Chair's term, we doubled down and cost contained the expense profile for the county during that time period. And you had a shift in the expense burden. So you, you created capacity on the revenue side and on the expense side, you simply lowered the expenses. I mean, and some of it was you weren't operating the same as you were before. That's things were closed. Mm -hmm. So if things are closed, your operating expenses go down, but you're collecting more money, right? And at some point, you know, um, you know, you're you're at the current pace. You, you don't want a 40% fund balance. I mean, quite frankly, I would never recommend having a fund balance that high. No. Uh, it sounds strange, but but that means no, no. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, citizens don't want you to be holding their money. Right, <laughs> right, right. It's a matter of who's holding the money. At some point, there is a reasonable amount. I mean, 90 days, 90 to 120 days. Um, fund balance is, is reasonable, reasonable and healthy. Maybe a little bit more, but when you get to a year or two years. <laughs> Uh, you know, some at some point somebody's going to say, "Well, why are you?" Why are you got my money back. Roll it back. Really? Well, now, now roll it back. Give it back. Give it back. <laughs> right. And so, so to answer your question, I think uh, we're you know another year or two. But again, fund balance. Look, we we've, we've gone from borrowing twenty five million dollars, thirty million dollars on a tax anticipation note every year to not having to borrow that money at all. We have gone from, so it's all about context. So having a bigger fund balance is not necessarily a bad thing, provided you told me you also have a corresponding plan in which you're going to be spending that money down over a period of time for, for projects or for things that you have going on. But just to keep it, to keep it, okay. it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And I say that to say because 
you know, that's going to be a constant theme as, as we need as an executive team, as a leadership team, you know, how, how we got to this point and how as a team we can continue to move, you know, move along that thing. So that's why I asked that. So the challenge that, that again, that this county is going to continue to have is um, you've got a growing, you've got a growing base and how fast is it going to grow? How, how are you going to keep up with it, right? And again, I keep thinking about the big things, public safety, transportation, and, and people, right? They're, 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 they're primarily, you know, your, your, your budget. Public safety accounts for, Roslyn check to about 50, 56% of your entire budget. You are in the public safety business, right? So the question is, outside of the statutory things that are required for you to do, what are the extra things that you want to do that are not statutory? Right? You got constitutional offices, you got courts. What are those are statutory? So what are the non-statutory things that you're going to invest in for the quality of citizens, for the quality of life of the citizens in, in the county? Right? How do you carve out money out away from the statutory, statutory things to promote a better quality of life, whether it's parks and rec, whether it's the arts, whether it's homelessness, whatever those issues are, that's going to be the challenge going forward. Yeah. Okay. yeah okay. But to that point, I'm picking dovetail behind yeah, the county administrator is, but it's still going to come back to the nickel. It's still going to come back to you guys. We're running the day to day. We show up every two weeks, which is okay. You've got this list of things. You've got this amount of money. Uh, you do have a strategic plan. Uh, we appreciate Linus and Savage with the work that they did to help us even get our minds around that and engage the public. So it's, it's being true to that, but to your point, it's only how fast can we go? And one, one of the things we historically and we, we've been faced with recently, again, is if I had to say pick the priority, though, it's, it's got to be you got to care of people means your payroll. And we treat, uh, I'm going to go back to how we treat our, 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 our little employees like batteries. And we get concerned, oh, it's going to cost us. Okay, and they're doing the work. But we'll buy shiny objects, beautiful buildings. And that's something that I'm going to make sure in the next two and a half years I'll lead at you. You're going to hear it constantly like, God, y'all don't take care of these people. Make them feel affirmed. We talk it. But then we don't budget for it. We don't plan for it. We, we try to close our eyes and close our ears in the sense that, well, yeah, we see it, but yet we, we get excited about the shiny objects. But yeah, it should grow. Right? It's going to. In fact, you can, you can monitor that. You can measure it. You can control it. But we get on these highs, these, 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 these ribbon cuttings and groundbreakings and all this stuff, and that's what we want to get excited about. But yet, you, 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 as we do those things, the people sit there and they're starving out. They're, they're, they're looking at this stuff. And if you're trying to change the culture of leadership, you've got to make sure you don't get people. So again, as we go forward, if that's important, I'm not, I'm not saying it has to be that way. You need to pay attention to it. So I just want to double tell, double tell on that. But the second thing is back to this. Will we get an analysis? I know you do it like every couple of years. Can we get to now? Are we still at a nickel? Or the speed, yeah. are we down to like three pennies? No, you're still, you're still, I mean, with the kind of increase in the revenue profile, you're still about a nickel, maybe a little less. I think it was four, it's on your screen. It's about it's four, four it's like four dollars and 28 cents okay. at this point, somewhere around there. That was the 21 numbers. Right. Yeah, so I still think it's probably four to five cents at the end of the day. Cause if you, and the funny thing is, we can go through the budget every year, and it seems like as a, as a, as a body, the debate always works out to be this last $3 million. Right. We're arguing. Right. Right. I mean, because you're not, it's the last $3 million we seem to have a discussion about it. Right? <laughs> and no matter what's in the, not, not, not debating what's in the number, but it always works out to be this last margin because salaries are already fixed, the pension contributions are already fixed. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to stay in the, uh, if you're going to stay in the, uh, the, the constitutional, all of that stuff is pretty much fixed, and everyone else is around 
that, that margin, that last three or four million dollars in it. It's highlighted at the end of the budget cycle, and it's also highlighted when we go back to the BIRs. We're still in that range of about you know, three or four million dollars that we're always having a debate about. Um, how to spend it, what should it be spent on. Um, it's always every year, see, we look at the data and step back, it still comes down to that same, same level. To, but to that point, so you got the five of us, and again, it's, it's, everybody thinks of it as you're shaping the corners, just shaking the edges. Yes. You know, you're rounding up them sharp edges, and everybody gets to weigh in. And to the point, um, to the board, right, 95% is already set by you guys, by default. Now we're doing this to sort of that new stuff, new shaping of it. So I, I've always historically understood what that meant. But to your point, um, is how do you sustain this? Um, again, going through the Great Recession, Congress didn't bail us out. Bill Banks out, so he lost all the homes. And it was real, which is why we have a renters market today. Please don't confuse what happened. They got it this time. They're like, okay, we ain't going through that no more. And they dropped all this cash in the system. They learned. Right, so here we are. So the question comes, guys, don't let it be a three like, okay, now look at this picture. You, you live through the recession, now you live through this, you live through this. Pay attention to the two experiences. So the question comes about how do you do this? Don't get ahead of this thing. I mean, to the point, this, now this three point million dollars, but when you get three point one million dollars in SPLOS, don't keep betting on that. That's what we try to say, guys. Slow down or, or, or edge this off. Um, and they, I know it's like new money. You're excited, like you don't know what to do. Um, you know, you go out and you start spending, but guys, y'all gotta be disciplined. We're back to work. You know, not only maturity, but discipline as you move forward. Um, and again, I know for the first time we're, we're taking care of the people. We're taking care of the assets. Okay, great. But you only can do so much. And the biggest thing I think where we're at right now, and I guess one of the things I want to make sure we get into is we, we were talking earlier about compliance, but I think there's still a risk, a, a risk component that we, we don't we don't have real conversation around risk. Like, okay, gosh, I know what exposure we got here and these obligations on these things that we've committed to and encumbered. Do you know if these things hit? What does that really mean to us? Do you really get this? If it's all hit at the same time? And so it's, it's, I'd like to, you know, as we, you know, hopefully over the next two years we begin to, as our new CFO, risk is important. Um, and, um, you know, increasing our internal controls beyond just our, our reporting, but there's more that we need to do, our compliance to ensure that we're on point. So that part as well. I agree. I agree. Um, I'm here. I'm here. Chief Financial Advisor, if you could speak. I'm sorry, I can't. If you can speak to the interest rates, what are they looking like now? <laughs> they're hot. <laughs> they're, 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 and what are we expecting to for see? Those, for those of us, I know Michael's your 88-year-old employee. <laughs> 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 they were all thinking that, but I was going to say it for them. Uh, he remembers when interest rates were, were 17, 18 percent, right? And now, I mean, some of us remember when they were that odd. Yes. Uh, yeah, for more, and it was good. Right. Right. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, all these that was a great great factors. But, uh, so, you know, we've seen uh, interest rates rise uh, rapidly in the last year. Um, yeah, I mean, the 10 year Treasury has broached 3%. The yield curve is inverted. Meaning the two-year rate is actually higher than the 10-year rate today. So those are all sort of signs of recession. Um, but no, no doubt, you're going to pay more in interest than you were a year ago if you were to go to a bond market today. Right? It's not a problem. Your bonds will sell as if they were rare. Your bonds will sell with no problem. The rate you get is the market rate, the best market rate that you can get. But it's going to be higher than what you probably do. We did a tan back in 17, I think the rate was 1.7%. Mm -hmm. Right? That's not my That's idea. unheard of me. You know, you're probably going to be, you know, you know, two and a half, you know, which is still great. But again, for those of us that are old enough, that are on that scale, that are old enough to remember. Why do you keep looking over here? I'll look at Attorney Coleman <laughs> and talk about it. But two and a half percent for money over a period of time or relative to history. You know, I still think people, again, they only know what they know today, but for those of us who remember that, I remember when rates were 10%, and we would have been happy to take a 10% rate. So, 
we're going to get you the best rate. It won't be a problem selling your bonds. It's just that you're going to get the best rate in the market at that time, uh, which I think if we held today, you know, two and a half percent, two and a half, you know, no more than three percent, somewhere in that range. So they, they have, you know, but the, the flip side of it is your property tax digest values have gone up 17 percent, 15 to 17 percent in that range. So you had an offset. You know the rates, the, the interest rates have gone up. You've had an offset in your digest and your, your sales taxes are up. Could be partially because of inflation. Your digest is up because house values are up. So there is a corresponding offset to that number. So it's not just, oh my God, my rates have gone up, but my revenues have gone down. So at least you're getting a few. A lot of the new values are based on the income tax taxes. They are. And, and so that could go down, but it could go up some more. We're at 9.1 now, but some people are saying we're already around 16, 17%, if you really count. It depends on how people count things. Yes, right? you can jiggle those figures around. And that. But uh, we're, another thing we've got to address is the pay scale. And of course, we, we gave 5%. Uh, this year, and we're going to give 5% next year and everything, 10% to uh, public safety, but inflation is eating it up. <laughs> and the thing about it is, uh, now the, the gas is coming down a little bit. You know, the state removed some of their, their tax on it and everything, but the reason it's coming down is because people aren't traveling as much. So they're staying at home, and so it's, it's supply and demand. So that's what's causing uh, a lot of that to come down. If people start traveling more, it could go up some more. But um, food is the biggest thing. The the supply of food. When you can, I, I can never in my lifetime. I've been here a long time. <laughs> remember going in a store and the shelves being empty like they are now, and and formula. You know, it, it's just, it's, it's kind of scary. So people better stock up and have a supply uh, because it's going to get worse if, if something doesn't happen. Uh, but, uh, you know, you got the farmers all over the world protesting because some of the countries won't let them use nitrogen. And so they're, they're not producing the food. And um, this is all kinds of protests everywhere. That's a lot of it was in Canada. It was uh, in the Netherlands last week or so. So um, the food, and it's, it's all geared to the food supply. So we have to feed the inmates. We have to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's eaten up the little race that we did give this year and next year. And we're still having to compete with larger counties that have the six flags. More people are going to parks and things locally because they're not traveling because of the gas prices. So there, um, we don't have the theme parks like White White Water and, and uh, Six Flags and things like that. Um, so we. We just got to remember, we've still got to address the the pay because the 15 minimum brought new people up, maybe, or some of the uh, uh, people up. But then people right above that just got the five percent, and so they're they've been here for years. So there there's still a problem. We we need to have a new study and we need to start with public safety. Yeah, all well, public safety is going to continue to, wow. again, it's going to continue to expand, right? Yeah. It's just questions how, how much and how fast it can be. And then the gas, gas prices are affecting them. And the, the delay in getting new automobiles, the chips overseas, everything is affecting them. It took us a, over a year to get three vehicles, I think, for the fire department mm -hmm. uh, because of the chips being manufactured just overseas. So the thing, the last thing, 
and I can take all the questions you want, but the last thing that always is, is you know, the last two or three years, one of our focuses has been talk about in terms of the makeup of the county, right? So, so you mentioned that the statistic, you mentioned that the, that the oldest employee is 88 years yes, old, sir. and you know, you know, aging populations, right? Are, are you know, Georgia is you know getting getting older, and the makeup of your your the county and that population. So, if you've got a uh, a robust, I come in a facility like the one that we're in, and realize that more of these facilities are probably going to be needed than less in the future, right? Because we're aging, people are living longer, quality of life. And so that's a wild card that I think that all of us, some of the counties are going to have to deal with going forward in terms of an aging population, how do you put money aside, uh, even from a property tax perspective, right? Because you've got people that are on fixed incomes, uh, how do you deal with that at some point in time? Because taxes can't keep going up and up and up. And at the same time, you have a population of people that are retired no longer have that, that income resiliency to, to make that adjustment. And the so, pressure to buy electric cars, well, electric cars, the vehicles, cost a lot more money <laughs> than uh, a gasoline. So, and there'll probably be mandates right. for that. So there's a lot of that going on. So when I think about things in the future, aging population in the county, what does that look like for you in terms of more senior centers, uh, more health care needs, uh, public safety needs? What does that really look like in terms of the mix of your taxpayers at the end of the day? Uh, tax commissioners here, I don't know if you keep the distribution of data by age, but in terms of, <laughs> but, but generally speaking, well, yeah. I don't know. You do have senior <laughs> exemptions. <laughs> yeah, but, but seniors, yeah, good thing the seniors pay their, their property taxes. Right, they pay for, they're not transient, they've invested in this community. Right. How do you keep them here in a rising environment, a rising cost environment? Right. Well, they don't pay school tax here. <laughs> they get an exemption. And Cobb has, has done that. At 62, they get all their school tax off. What's that? At 62, they get all of their school tax off. They're on the state But that also we has do. negative impacts as well. Oh, I know it, but it does <laughs> encourage you. People to come here it does. Just because of that. <laughs> so, so Dave, with, with inflation kind of where it is, with inflation kind of where it is, do you anticipate that to continue in that direction? But reading the, the trades, it's kind of have slowed down and started kind of going in the reverse. Uh, even with the state tax, gas tax, they kind of held off on that another month. I think it was 60 days or 30 days. What do you what do you see if you can say the future? What do you see, and then how would that affect the county and our and our digest and our our county and what we need to kind of be preparing for? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question. I got two of you gentlemen, maybe really disagree, but I'm going to tell you. I always believe that once inflation is there, uh -huh. depending on how you measure, gas prices will come down because they're variable. But once someone's house is value at a number, right. it's very slow to come down. And it's very, very slow to come down. Right. Because there's no, again, and the problem for us is we build our budgets based on values that are that are annually, right? But we're not assuming that they're gonna ever drop, right? Because then you get used to, if you build recurring cost models based on property tax values, mm -hmm. and, you know, 88% of your budget comes from property taxes. I think, it's probably, I think it's a little less than that, but about 75% of your budget is property taxes. So I'm not saying you don't have any incentive to lower the, you can't lower the digest values, that's the market function. Mm -hmm. But they're slower to come down. And they're, they're, they're quick to rise. They're quick to rise, yeah. and generally speaking, food prices and things that the commissioner just mentioned, they don't come down as fast. Right? Right. They just, it's, it's, I, I call it persistent. Mm -hmm. Because people get used to it after a while. It's just, yes. particularly if I just paid a hundred dollars for this home, I still want to believe that my house is worth a hundred dollars. It's right. not worth eighty. And but they don't want to pay the property taxes on it. Right. Right. Only when you sell is when you want to say it's worth that hundred or two hundred dollars. That's exactly right. Exactly. Do but, not forget what happened in two thousand and eight. 
market with the recession. Well, let me what? say the, the, the difference between then and now, though, I truly believe that even if you look at, and again, these gentlemen may, may disagree, but if, when we looked at the foreclosure data, there was a lot of foreclosures that didn't really happen. And I think part of it was, you know, firms like ours and, and you know, investment firms started buying properties, right? So your property, a lot of these properties are now being rented or they're now owned by Investing in Blackstone. Yeah, Black Black Blackstone Black Rock. and all of Black Rock. Okay. They, they all own we have these investment But there's some Chinese companies. <laughs> right? Now we're renting them. Chinese but banks have no reason properties. to put them in foreclosure <laughs> because you still collect the tax commission still collected the property tax. Right. Somebody was paying them, right? Yes. Somebody was paying. So I still think that the mix has changed to the extent that you have you know, you have institutions now that own those properties. Mm -hmm. So not that they don't go down, but those property taxes will continue to pay. But the people, uh, a lot of it's, they turn it to rental. And oftentimes they, they don't stay in one place it, it, you know, as long, and they don't get invested in the community as much. So we're still, and I'll finish up, let me go. We have housing, housing stock particular in this county is still low. The building apartments. Every time I go around, I see, I see apartments being built. Yes. Housing is still being built, but that housing and new, new house supply is still a gap. In this county, just like everywhere else, there's still a gap, but there's still a supply gap, right? And that's going to continue and persist because after 07, 08, they stopped building. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody went to renting property. So the housing is still going to be built at some point in time, maybe a little slower, but you still have a gap to fix in this county in terms of people wanting to move here and not having enough support. But the demand on that house is a lot greater, and that's yes. why the cost is a lot higher. The rent is high, too. Well, but, but that renter may not be paying property taxes directly to the, uh, the tax commissioner. Yeah. However, oh, yeah. the oh, owner yeah. is. Yeah. So, so you, we, we, no, but, but they pay in the rent though. But if you're they still, we, we're still collecting. It, it's not like a renter is not paying property taxes. He or she is probably paying it through their rent to the cost of that particular. If you got rent now that I noticed as high as twenty two hundred dollars a month, that that's way off. I mean, we got some that's being built on the north side that's going to start at about fifteen to two thousand dollars a month. And these are houses that they're building a housing community and renting them, not to sell, but to rent them. So it, it's, it's so, we're, we're renters, let me just make sure we're always clear. Renters do pay property yes, taxes. They do. Yeah. And the, the owner yeah. simply charges yeah. you more That's exactly right. to cover the cost. It's right? a pass -through. It's a, yeah, it passed through. Yeah, absolutely. But, but okay, you, you've answered my question. Yeah. So I was really trying to ask more of the question of kind of as a county with our buckets with our funds, where should we be cautiously moving and where are we should be aggressively going to make sure that, you know, because there's no true answer, you know, but kind of. I think you're going to have to, I think the town is going to have to manage the expense profile in the next couple of years, meaning it's payroll. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, it's payroll. I mean, that's. You know, but you're in you're in you're in the people business, right? So, you know, you can't. I'm not sure you can just get rid of you know, you know in terms of attrition, right. right? You have to manage attrition. You have to manage the payroll. Mm -hmm. It's the payroll expense. That's 65 to 68 percent of your budget right now, and it's going to continue to go up over time. So unless you, that's what you're going to have to manage, and then decide as you build new fire stations, as you build and acquire more assets, what is it going to cost to maintain those assets going forward, right? right? And, you know, and is it, is it the right size yeah. relative to the population that you think you're going to have in the future, mm -hmm. right? And that's the question, I mean, you know, that, that's the issue. Okay, okay, okay. Let me add to that, to that point, back to the payroll, which I think, again, it's going to be up to the board to only determine where we go. Uh, take a position from all the perspectives. But when I think about the payroll, and I go back to it again, 
we don't have no money. We had an attitude, the psychology out there of, of things being cheap. Now that had an impact on us because we didn't, we didn't really recognize our own value. It's like we, we, it, was, it was a fake narrative. Right, you know, we, we were, we were, it was closed county. We just kept it really tight, really, just for a, all, a small group of people. And to be honest about this, because it was our attitude. And I would really value it. Because when I hear like, well, we haven't taken care of people for 40 years, 30 years, like, okay, so what now? And now you have a, a group, now you've got some money, now you realize you got to deal with these assets. And now it, it's, it's psychology. You, we were undervalued. Now we're set, resetting it. There will be impact back to risk. You're going to lose some people. That time won't be affordable. And I, I, and I always want to encourage you. Got to you got to have the whole conversation, both sides. Is said there, there's going to be impact naturally, right? I mean, you, you, sometimes you don't want to say you don't say that the pandemic that we're going to lose some citizens. If we don't mask up, we don't do certain things that we we're going to lose some things. And so I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, guys. They mentioned Mr. Point, like, yeah, guys, pay attention to this. Now, we're, we're, it depends on the room in the moment. One minute we're talking about payroll, one minute we're talking about this, like, and we're, 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 whoever we're talking to, we're laying down these expectations, like, guys, y'all can't commit to all that. Y'all have to take a position. Who are we? If you're going to take care of the people, take care of the people. We'll take care of all of you. Right? What, what are you going to do? You, you can't spot do this. But this is the point about maturity, back to leadership maturity, financial maturity, all of it is we're maturing as a county. It's a great place, but it, it's not just this conversation, but it's also communicating to the public. This has to get outside of like, okay, where are we? Who are we? This has to get out to the public. So we don't have this, like, what they, like look, y'all, don't y'all see what's happening? We got, now we can't be all things to all people. I can't worry about the food cost. I can't worry about all, take that up with Congress. Stay in my lane. What well, can do, what you can control is, again, with the things you control locally. Like, okay, let's take care of the people, let's pick a, you know, a couple of capital assets that we can sort of go tackle, which is, I said all that to get to this point. You said it twice, so what's the issue with transportation? You, you know, um, David, that you said that we need to be concerned about. I got public safety, what's transportation that you said you had a concern about? No, 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 no concern. Not a concern, whatever yeah, exactly. your, your context. Again, you gotta move people. When people are, people are moving out there, you gotta, you know, you gotta get them from the agency. It's the same, no, so, so typically jurisdictions have grown because they've got a good health care system, they have a good education system, and you can move people from A to B. And so how does that look at the end of the day in terms of planning and zoning and transportation and quality of life? All of those parts have to fit together, right? And the problem, it's not the problem. Whenever you mention transportation, public safety, it's never, it's never cheap. It's never cheap. I mean, you're gonna have to figure out how that, that you just can't put a rope here and just put a rope there. Right, somebody has to coordinate all that. It all has to kind of be put together. Where's your healthcare services? Where are your fire services? Where are your, uh, we've seen a case recently where they want to build a fire station for an apartment complex, but somehow the ground was too soft or something where they couldn't get the truck in, which would then impact everyone's insurance rating and I mean, all of this stuff is connected at the end of the day. Transportation is expensive. It's just water and sewer is expensive. Transportation, public safety is expensive. So your best bet is to coordinate that and plan appropriately for the growth that you're gonna have that you've seen in the last 10 years. What does that look like? Right? That's, that's what I mean in terms of the cost of the, the issue, is how is that gonna be accomplished? Uh, the last couple of budget cycles we've talked about road resurfacing and subdivisions that were, I don't know if the numbers were, were 10 years behind. How does that work, right? You put people in a subdivision, they complain, they can't get down, up and down the street, kids playing, whatever that, may, whatever that looks like. So you've got maintenance, you've got growth. How do we deal with that going forward? Um, how do we deal with that? School goes over there, who's responsible for the road? Fire station needs to, be, needs to be near the school. How do we get it there, right? Healthcare, all of those things have to be coordinated, whether it's in a strategic plan or this management group is keenly aware of kind of putting all those pieces together and then paying for them. 
Um, and the taxpayers at some point have to, we have to do a better job of explaining to them that if we don't put a fire station where there's been growth, you may not pay us, but you're going to end up paying them. You're going to pay the insurance company because the ISO rating is not going to be sufficient, right? You're going to pay it one way or another, right? So, you, you know, you're better off, I think, you know, paying it to, to us to be able to put the fire station there and the appropriate roads there and access there as opposed to paying your homeowner's insurance company, which is a reactionary, right? Is there any such thing as an impact fee for, like, fire or public safety? I'm sorry. Is there any such thing as an impact fee for uh, public safety? Especially from these uh, big know. companies coming in that demand the taller trucks, the, the ladder trucks, and everything. You know, I'm not, I'm not aware of that, that being implemented. Uh, that's, that's a good thought, but I'm not, I'm not aware today of that. I think it's know. Forsyth County or somewhere uh, northern north of uh, Marietta. Yeah, we'll have to they, look into that. Yeah, they, they have impact fees. Yeah, it's not a public <laughs> safety impact. But I just wondered, is there such thing? Because those are the two, I mean, that's one of the largest uh, parts of our budget. Right. We'll have to look into it. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not aware of it, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so what you can do is charge new, for new development. You can place a fee on it. And you can use that for infrastructure, like roads, um, for, for, as far as public well, safety is concerned, fire stations. So I don't know if you've been to, in Fayetteville. There's a fire station right in the middle of Fayetteville Pavilion that was built using impact fees from that development. Right. Thing. So it didn't cost the county anything to build it. You do have to fund the operation costs, but you can use that to build the building. So the, the challenge with that, though, is that impact fees paid by who? The, um, no, developer. the developer. The developer. And of course, I'm sure they probably, they probably pass it on to the consumer. The sure. the they probably pass it on to the homeowner. It ultimately gets paid by the homeowner. Yes. Right? So yes. the challenge is I want people to move here, but I don't want to make it so cost prohibitive that they can move somewhere else to keep it, right? There, this is one of the fastest growing counties in the state. No, no. They, they have impact fees. No, no, I get it. I'm just saying, I get it. I just, it's circular. Yeah. I mean, it's a circular discussion that we're having. That may, you know, again, I'm not opposed to it or one way or another. I just, it's a circular discussion. Um, you know, same, look, we can have the same discussion about economic development. If you want to, you want to go there, I mean, in terms of, we're going, to, we're going to broaden it to just, you know, in terms of whether the abatements that go on, we can have the circular discussion <laughs> all day long. I know that's a, that's a hot thing for, well, we can have that discussion about impact fees, about abatements, about job creation. You know, what's the right call structure to attract somebody, but not to the point where you reach a tipping point where you're like, okay, this is not a win. It's got to be a win-win for everyone at the end of the day. And that's what y'all have to decide what that framework looks like. All we can do is sort of yeah. frame I've that box. I've forward. suggested impact fees. But wow. impact fees, abatements, how is all, how, how is all that work and get put together? Impact fees on Dollar Trees and John Dollar Yes. <laughs> 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 so, Madam Chair, I probably we can always see. have a bond. For, we can have a, a bond, a district, create a district, mm -hmm. and put a bond. Up. Good. A fee. All right. So I can like see it. Thank you. I appreciate it. She's on the advisory committee. She's on the advisory committee. Corbin, certainly I appreciate you presenting um, information to the board on the macro level today. We just wanted to stay microscopic with our discussion, wanted us to look at our external well, we get environment. The budget, we get microscopic. So I guess <laughs> it's microscopic, but macro helps us better understand what we are to look for. Y'all, again, for the just to finish up, y'all are in great shape. At the end of the day, you've come a long way from where you were. Madam Chair and all of you have done, uh, have made the, the rating, I think we your state of the, the county, mm -hmm. the rating agency stuff came in really, really positive. Uh, you know, and, and it's been a pleasure uh, kind of outlining what this stuff looks like for y'all. And if we can just focus and stay disciplined, I think we're going to be okay to, 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 you know, to deal with anything that may come up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So we just got the information from the city of Douglasville well manager. They are going to keep the same. Um, well, they're not running back here. The city. Yeah. September 1st is when they're going to Okay. Well, commissioners, we have a um, another presentation. Something that I'm going to check. You know, so you need another break, or you're okay? Okay. Well, that means mm -hmm. our next presenter is um, so tax commissioner and our chief appraiser, tax commissioner Brenda Baker, and uh, okay. chief appraiser Stephen uh, Stephen Baffin. Well, thank you, Trust me, it won't be long. I was just delivering the good news, the bad news, and you guys can decide for in between. <laughs> he's going to pull it up. Elliot, he's going to pull it up. Yeah. You got Elliot back there working? You always got Elliot working. See, everybody know Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty good. Like this one. Because it's being paid, so I need voice to project. Okay. Go for it. I'll do that. Okay. I think I'll be up here quick. <laughs> and we can talk about some other things that we're working on at the tax commissioner office and things that we have accomplished just a little bit this year. Everybody can hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. You okay over there? Thank you. <laughs> I love you. Uh, that's mine. I only have these. I only have yours. Oh. Uh, let's see which one you got there. That's mine. That's his. I only have his. What'd you do with mine, Fred? We don't have that five year. Uh, we had it just up. Uh, I'm sorry, it wouldn't. It, it was that one. It was five yeah. five for first time. Uh, it was on mine. Uh, no, uh, yeah, yeah, five years. It's, it's, it's on mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when we had a prior to. Yeah. I can talk about it while he's looking for it anyway. Yeah, we have copies. Yeah, we got copies. You should have copies of it. Um, our chief appraiser will talk about the first half. I'm going to talk pretty much about the second half, bottom half. Um, we're in great Mr. Corbett said it. We're in great shape. We look good. Um, if you've got the piece of paper in front of you, you'll see the net tax di digest increase is about 10.84. Um, the tax increase in growth is about 16.79%. I'm gonna fudge you a little bit off of that. It may go down just as much. We still got some numbers to run. It's not gonna be much, but it may go down just a little bit. We're still up, up, probably in the 15, 16. I'm always on the conservative side. But then once you come back and say, no, we're not to the 16. I'm always on the conservative side. It may go down just a little bit, but talking to Steve yesterday, feel very comfortable with them numbers, but it might adjust a little bit. I always feel that things may adjust a little bit. Um, but as you can see, our numbers for the digest are going to look very good. You know, we had the reassessment of properties, which Steve will go over, uh, that brought our income up. Our collection rate has been excellent. Uh, it'll be 99% again this year. I know you guys, when you do your budget, you go 93%. Uh, but our collection rate for the last five years have been 99%, except for 2020 which was 98.6 percent so we have a great collection rate um we've collected since you guys closed in march you get us to close in march in the march we've collected another i think last year i told you you will increase about three million dollars i think we came in ten thousand under that uh, this year uh, but since we've cl you've closed the books we've collected another $2.8 million in revenue that's come in. We're still collecting. We still got some people outstanding. Um, we got one company that doesn't want to let us in the building. Um, we're kind of co collaborating on that now, trying to get in the building and see how much tax they owe us. It's about 20, 
companies in that building that they won't let us in to see what equipment's there. But we should have that done, I'm hoping, by next week. Uh, we got to go before the judge and get what we need to get to uh, get into that building. So we're doing great. It looks like we're in great shape. And I'll take any questions whatsoever. What about public utilities? Are you, is it going to be, are you going to get it in time to their collection to be this year? Yes. Okay. I believe so, right? Steve? It depends on the Department of Revenue. I I don't handle appraisal of public utilities. Mm -hmm. The state does it and send it to us. So when But they, they haven't it, seen it to you yet. No. no. When they do it is when we get it. So yeah. it's not in my hands. But I know they are working on it because I talked to Mr. Colson the day before yesterday when I called him regarding the tag. Uh, by the way, the TAD is not in this uh, new digest. I don't think we talked about that. It will be in for next year, and uh, we'll have everything rolling. They, matter of fact, they're working on that certification for us as we speak. It's just we're going to get it too late to have it in this one. Questions? Yeah. I believe the NLD uh, conversation is with our appraiser, right? Not on digest. Who would that be? I'll let him answer that. Pretty, pretty high this time, or pretty minimal? Uh, the NODs would be coming in um, now, so uh, I don't have a number on NODs, but uh, most of our um, assessment is already on the digest. Okay. It's currently on the digest. Properties like Mr. Baker spoke about, with, which we, we haven't gone in, they have estimated values. So once we get actual values, those will be NODs. But they are listed on the digest as we speak, but we don't have actual numbers. It's estimated numbers. And that's personal property. But we will have NODs, and uh, in every year there will be yeah, NODs. Yeah. Um, but we, uh, it's very much minimized. We won't have 800 NODs, <laughs> I think, no. Yeah. Okay. We're on top of the, the numbers in the digest. What about ENRs? Uh, you know how much county tax came out because of an error? I don't know that yet. We're we're still working on that. And we're in a new system, so uh, just being honest, we've got a couple glitches that are, we're still working on, uh, but they will be resolved before we do the final digest. And we'll have those numbers, but okay. it's it's going to be minimal. So we're looking good. We're looking very good. So, to, to that point, I don't want to get ahead of. I don't want to get ahead of Valcor's presentation. And I was going to wait for my question, but I'm put it out here for a timeline. We're talking about military county clerk. I know you've got a calendar, and I'm hearing we're hut, we're hedging. We don't know the number yet. We not quite. When are we going to know? What is the number? At some point, we got to go public. At some point, you got to declare. What the number is. When will we know that? And I, I'm just asking, I'm not pushing it now. If you don't know the number, you don't know the number. You're still doing the number calculation. But again, one more time, we're trying to synchronize all of us. We talk about no, not, not being in silos. Like, guys, we're all in the room together. You know, county clerk, she's going to do this calendar. We're going to be like we were last year. Like, let's, let's all get on the same page. So I'm not pressing the number right now if you don't have it. But I think that's something that, again, that was what this meeting's about. Where are we at right now? The best time to get numbers would be after appeals are in, and uh, we would know the number of appeals, and um, the, the deadline for appeals for commercial property is August 15th. August 15th? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So final numbers would be best known after appeals are in. So we, we would know the number of appeals, the percentages, etc. But, uh, that's the best I can say. No, you're good. County clerk, wherever you are, but based on that, um, and based on assuming there's no rollback, uh, what, or if there's an increase, we've got to publish three. What is the calendar based on our meetings and special public? Can you say that again for us? Yeah, that's not, not throwing us off, though, because, I mean, yeah. That's what, say it. That's going to throw us off. Oh. I was counting on having the the notice go to the paper um, tomorrow to be for, the, for it to run on August 9th. And it needed to run on August 9th so that we would be in, in the timeline of our public meetings. So if it doesn't run on August 9th, then we'll come to actually adjust our public hearings. Which 
puts us, what, into September or, or something? Uh, I mean, we could have some special call meetings, I mean, through the end of, I think we, when do we have to have? You can have two meetings one day. You can have two meetings one day. Right. <laughs> so where does the tax commission take the digest to get certified and you have to work backwards from there? And I thought that's what was to me, what I the information I received. I thought that's what had been decided. Yeah, I thought it had to be you had to have it there by September first. That's correct. Yeah. So that's, that, that's why I was just about to say I wouldn't hold off on your publishing. Right. I, I would I would publish what you're gonna publish by August 9th. Uh, because I don't, I don't really feel that your millage rate is going to determine what he does by August 15th. So I have a question. So the, the values that were sent to me, the um, PT32, yeah. that has a rollback calculation on it, and then the doctors that came along with that, those are the numbers that are reflected on the five-year history that I did. That's correct. But you're telling me those are not the final numbers. And it's okay for us to advertise that. It, it, those numbers will stand. Those are the numbers are, that we have agreed on right. as of that date. Uh, we, we, we had a conversation. Because I'm accustomed to getting a lot down digest and going from that. And I thought that's what was sent to me. That it, it, it is. It is. So yeah. That, that is yeah. Yeah. So those are the numbers. Okay. Okay. That's you what, can that's always what you go down be. on the middle. Those are the numbers. Right. You yeah. advertise. So we can right. advertise. You, right. you, you can always go down. Those right. are right. Numbers. Okay. Yeah. So you you go by those numbers. Once okay. we give, <laughs> once we give you that PT, that's it. Okay. That's you're you're ready to go. That's why I say I wouldn't change, Lisa. What you're gonna I'll advertise? We are. Okay. We've already got the school board in the paper today. Right. So they're they're in the paper today. So, at least so they've already right. determined same thing that you're trying to determine. All right, so because they got their PT form the same. Time. I had the information sent to her today. She's going to get it to the paper on yeah. Friday. Sure. It'll be in the ad. It'll be in the paper next Tuesday, and the first two hearings will be the following Tuesday. Mm -hmm. This is the plan right now. Those are the dates that Lisa gave me. Right. And one of one of our goals is that we've talked about is we hope to be 30 days earlier next year. That's one of our plans is to be 30 days earlier so everybody can get their PT forms in July mm -hmm. and we can get this done a lot quicker. So because we were changing systems though, conversion. and when a conversion went July 18th, we were unable to do that this year. But one of our goals has been that we sat down and talked about is for you guys to be able to get your PT forms by July of next year. School board is pressing us in June because they closed their books in the gym. So we're going to try to get them to you by July of next year because we're all on one system now. Uh, so by June, we hope to have this all done July. All right. So to, to, to thank you for that, to that point so that we're all on the same page because, again, listening to the narrative, it's like we're hedging. And then we say, well, but you got the data. Well, if we got the numbers, then we should be definitive. This is live, guys, just in case y'all didn't know. But we're taping this. But we just needed to know what the numbers are because we're sitting here trying to make decisions. Um, we're trying to anticipate the future of the county. Um, you, you weren't here for the first part. So this was important, but what's the number? Right? It's always important, but what's the number? You, you, you got to know definitively. Take position. What is the number? Declare it. If it changes after back, you got to make adjustments. That's fine. But at some point, we have to declare a number. So it sounds like we're, we're now I'm feeling more. We're, we're okay. Lisa, are you okay? We're going to go. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. yeah. yes, sir. we're good. Chief Financial Officer. Y'all are good. Yes, good. That was important for us to, because we come in these meetings, we're like, okay, we're, we're looking, we're listening for something. Yeah, we're good. Tell us where, where we're at. Like, but we're saying we still don't know, like, okay, well, why am I here? No, why am I here? If I stay here a half day, and I still didn't get to the number. Right? right? And that, that, that's important for, uh, again, respecting everybody's time, that we're coming together, we talk, come on, guys, let's line this thing up. Let's all let's communicate. Let's talk. But all right, we're good. Yeah, you're right. happy now. Thanks, sir. Okay. Yeah. I got a question. Yeah, real, real quick. Where are we? I want to make sure since we have both of you here today, where are we at with respect to the? We haven't had a tax. We haven't had an abatement committee meeting for a while. 
Are we, are we, are we, where don't, we don't stop me. <laughs> don't stop me on live TV. I'm just taking on the Good question. I, I, I never wanted compliance. Good question. I asked that <laughs> Commissioner Cobb and I talked a while ago and I said the same thing. Yeah. And I, I'll just, um. Chris uh, Parker will be here. He'll be here. He'll be here. He'll be here. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing. I, I, I really don't. Um, but we need to because we're way behind and we're missing money. I made so, that so very that, that's, clear. That's, I mean, okay. I mean, that's we're we're missing some funds, and uh, we're not getting updates. I know for a fact we got a new company coming. He keeps up with the bank, doesn't he? Huh? Uh, don't y'all keep up with the abatement, the percentage? I, I keep up with the values. So the abated property, I do have a value on them, and they do um, get their. You know, change the percentages as they change? I do, yeah. Okay. We have a schedule with the changes. Okay. Do you have one person that does that in the, the office? Um, we have an um, assistant that is now doing it. So Tyler Technologies can handle okay. allocating percentage. You can actually punch the like figures in. We, we, we have to be. Um, because even though in the past, we had to use, identify as um, abated properties as exempt and then we manually put 60 percent 10 percent whatever yeah, yeah. so we had to allocate we had to do a main parcel and an a parcel mm -hmm. and um, the a parcel was the parcel that we calculated the tax on it was done manually by an individual right. now the um is world is implemented and there is a way to allocate the values automatically. So That's you can put it in the system, we'll have one parcel. The tax is right. calculated yeah. on one parcel. <laughs> so we it's are um, <laughs> it, we're in the process of doing that now. That's being done with, well, by Tyler now. That was one of my. So I am looking to identify abated parcels as abated and not exempt. Because when they show in the system as exempt, it comes up as zero taxes, and then we need to do an A parcel to calculate their taxes, and it's done manually now. So we, we just implemented Tyler, and it's being done as we speak. We're, we're looking at two options to do abatement parcels. So it's being done as we speak. But he doesn't know if they've met and their, their employee requirements, employee yeah. requirements all and all that. All, all he's doing you know, is the property. He doesn't exactly. know if they've met their requirements. And they should be taxed now. Mm -hmm. That's what the part we're looking for. So okay. that, that's where we're at now. And we just got a new company, Home Chef, 700 employees that are coming aboard uh, this year. Well, so it sounds like you probably need to be. And I just, that I'm just. I'm the vice happened. chair on that. She's the chair. I think Commissioner uh, from Fourth okay. District is the chair. So. And Joe's guy. <laughs> she doesn't say my name, so we notice that. But anyway, um, I didn't know I was still on that, that committee. So, yeah, we could call me. We need to make sure that they are compli in compliance with um, the abatement and they're paying taxes on the unabated part. <laughs> Steve, you want to come on up? I can. Come on up. Yes, sir. So any other questions? Any, any other questions? No. She sure does. She says the point. I'll be here. Is there any other questions? You're not leaving, are you? No, I'm going to be here. Okay. I'm going to hang around if you guys got any other questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Madam Good morning. Chair, Vice Chair, Commissioners. Good morning, all. It's my pleasure to be here to present before a forward-looking board. I appreciate um, the assistance I've been getting and the support. Um, we currently have uh, a new camera system, which will be very helpful. We are experiencing some teasing things now, but uh, 
I'm sure as soon as we, work, we iron out the kinks, we'll be fine. Uh, Greg looked at the macro level, so I'm just gonna give a small breakout of the major changes. This is 2020, 2021 digest changes. Residential, and this is in the past. Residential properties uh, percent change was 4.94% uh, in 2021. Uh, commercial properties, the growth was 8.49. And industrial properties was 16.63. Uh, we, the major difference, uh, major change was on personal property. We saw that there was a negative growth. There was a minus 6.7. But on a whole, if we look at the, uh, the numbers, there was an increase. Can you move to the next slide, which is gonna show the 2021, 2022 numbers. In residential properties, there is showing a 25%, 25.78% increase. Commercial properties is showing a 24.95% increase. Industrial properties is showing a 21.76%. And um, conservation use, personal property is also showing an increase this year of 12.37. I just wanna point out that total exemptions had a substantial increase this year of to 57.8%. So exemptions have also increased, um, and that's like... Um, Freeport. No, not Freeport. Freeport is included in, um, but the exemptions for um, not only Freeport, but um, homestead exemptions, etc. there has been an increase among, uh, along with Freeport and um, conservation use. So um, let's move to the next slide. Area. It's um, this year, 20, 2022 growth, it, we're showing uh, inflationary growth of 18.3% and an overall real growth of uh, roughly 6.9%. 6.9, that's the highest I've seen. And um, I want to go to the next slide, which will show um, the, the appeals as of today. Um, we're showing resident, uh, roughly 500 appeals in residential, 60 appeals in commercial, 45 appeals on personal property, and that's as of um, August 2nd, that's yesterday. And Homestead is showing 30 appeals, motor vehicle three. So as of um, 8-2, we had 638 appeals. Last year, we had close to 1,500 appeals. So I know most of the appeals tend to come in closer to the end of the appeal period. The notices for residential and personal property, the end of that appeal period is um, August 8th. And for commercial properties, it's going to be August 15th. So this is where we are today, and I would say that's very good, considering that um, we, we got close to 50 hundred appeals last year, and uh, considering that we did a commercial property revaluation, and we are only showing 60 appeals as of today. I know most commercial properties, they do use a tax rep to represent them, so I'm sure they're not in yet until close to the end of the period then we'll get a, a burst of them in. But on a whole, I think we're looking good, and it's safe to say that um, Douglas is in good shape based on these numbers. Have you got a pie of the categories of the digest, like personal, commercial? Have you got a pie to show that? Because we used to put that on the tax bill. I think. So, um, I'm not sure if you're, you need a pie chart of the numbers or you need a pie chart percentages of the count. Of the percentages um, so of we can the digest. Use, we can use the, the same numbers and put it in a pie, but it's the numbers. The pie represents... No, no, that's the appeals. I'm saying... No, no, no. The one before showed residential, 25% okay. yes. commercial, 21%, uh -huh. and um, industrial, 20, um, the percentage. So I can put it in a pie, but it's the same thing. The pie is okay. representing the same, these same numbers. But I'll, I'll, I'll convert it to a pie chart okay. and I'll email it to you. Thank you. 
Any questions? So that, that's pretty much the breakout of the numbers. Yeah, of that one. To, to your point, I want to go back to uh, go back to new growth. Would you say 6.9 percent? That is correct. And then for the overall inflation, or 18 point. I, It's the fourth slide, I think. <coughs> Next one. Next. That's it right there. 18.30 and 6.96. 6.96. All right, so again, when we first came, I'm not sure took over leadership in 2017, we had what, 5.5%? New growth. Um, first time we had ever experienced that. I remember um, the Thomas. Joy Smith from um, University of what, West Georgia. Um, that, that was, it was an but it says, you know, it, it happens. Uh, you usually don't have new growth like that. I anticipate new growth is going to be about the same this year based on all that housing, all, them, I mean, all that movement, There's no choice, but the pop. But you don't, you don't bet the farm on that. Um, that's going to normalize over time, just 18%, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Like this is, like you can't, and, and that's the point about budgeting and everything like guys that's that's an anomaly don't, don't get used to that don't 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 budget based on this 18 percent based on new growth at, at best your historical new growth not on the five percent so some of this this intelligence you gotta know how to it's all about context is deficit okay I know what you read now don't base this budget on no five percent new growth all all the time that's that's rare because it is going to come back down and everything's about cycles guys it's an ebb and flow it's anticipatory so Here's my question to you, as you as you get into this new system, which is again, I'm just trying to anticipate, and your data becomes more accurate, and I know you were doing an analysis on the commercial, when does all that hit when we get to a point where you're now taking us to the next level, from what you inherited, to where you think we should be, where your data is where you think it should be with this new system that we invest in, when will that really begin to hit, when we begin to make these adjustments in commercial, et cetera? The thing is, um, the, the system is, what we put in. So what we put in is what we can, it's just a little bit more accurate and it's much better on reporting. Uh -huh. I anticipate that things will only get better with, with proper management. Another area that we have not been looking at that we should be looking at is first and profit. And um, so another ask will be for an increase in the budget to, to accommodate auditing. We have never audited in, uh, personal property in over 10 years. So personal property is comfortable yeah. and they submit a return and it's been accepted and it's just- As is. As is. And um, there are a lot of personal property that's out there that need to be looked at. They're not at their true value. Yeah. Their inventory is not being looked at. So that's another area, but um, this is where we can see um, missing revenue, I would say. But the system is what it is. It's much better on reporting. It's, um, it's more robust with income, the income analysis of properties. We are now looking at more properties using um, the income method to valuation as opposed to cost. And the um, Department of Revenue um, says it. Properties that are income generated should be valued. It says shall be valued on income. So we are now valuing more properties on income. So um, a lot of taxpayers are not familiar with income, but um, we're getting there. So I do anticipate a lot of commercial appeals, but we're getting the taxpayers familiar with the income method to valuation. That take it from the Schedule C IRS board. We can, we can, but we we need a, we need their their balance sheet. We need their rent roll. We need we need their income. It can be taken from Schedule C for those who, who don't have a proper accounting system. But ideally, we we need their balance sheet. We need to see um, their net income. So income is based on net operating income and the cap market capitalization rate. So we're now looking at income as one of our methods to value commercial property. So we are guided by Department of Revenue. Market costs and income are the three methods to valuation. 
and we look at all three, but the most appropriate for income generating properties is income. So, so you know, again, being the tax collector, you know, that, that's the that historical role, you know, being able to go get that. Um, taxation is important. We're going to come back to, to Douglas County again as we evolve and mature. Right? We got a lot of money on the table, a lot of money on the floor. Some of this, we, we, you know, back to, uh, back to the citizen right now. Now, we understand, but as leadership, as government, do we really take care of business? Or do we just allow things to happen over time? We all hid our true value. Right? We, we, we didn't really collect. It was like we were all in on a game. Uh-huh. So you had the government that was going on with the citizen, and we're keeping like, but you're not taking care of things. You're not taking care of your own. You're, you're not taxing yourself right. You, you're being convenient. You're not being consistent. And I'm listening to this like, okay, not right. You're catching up. You're finally getting where it should be. And it, yeah, it's a shock in the sense that, oh yeah, but to your point, so roll it. You, you know what you're doing. Bring along. But at the same point, you can't, I mean, when I hear the citizens are mad, like, for, for what? You allowed a, a, a fake taxation to go along. You, you didn't collect like it was supposed to be collected. And so now it's hitting us all at one time, and now we have, and now we gotta go take care of people and all these things that historically, what have we been doing? And that's the thing, guys, y'all gotta get this, like, okay, let's, the past is the past. I don't wanna hear it. If you, got, you, gotta, you gotta normalize and fix something that, like, I mean, look at, I'm, I'm highlighting, look at this, look at that. So it's crystal clear. Y'all all see, like, look at what has happened or what didn't happen. And all of a sudden, we're making these adjustments and stuff. It ain't like we're doing something intentionally. Like, no, gosh, y'all didn't even do what was right. We have this sort of this self-righteousness sometimes. Like, you're like, okay, wait a minute, hold on, what now? And we're trying to make the adjustments. We're trying to do all, but I want people to feel comfortable. Like, okay, just take it for a grain of salt. Know what's right and wrong. But again, a lot of this stuff, like guys, this wasn't right. There was a lot of stuff that, you know, we're having to raise things, but guys, y'all left so much on the table. So we're in conflict with ourselves. And we're not collecting on what we should be, but the new people were. And that's what I'm like, okay, wait a minute, what about those guys to this point that you can't even get access to their books? And I'm sitting here, I'm stunned. I'm like, what now? And so you like, we're just self reporting but wait, wait a minute, what now? Y'all allowing this? This has been allowed all these years. And now was that and he's coming in, these new people are like, okay, what y'all doing out here? <laughs> well yeah. And it's okay. Uh, and so uh, uh, to um, um, obviously the, the task commissioner and our um, executive director over um, obviously is appraising with chief appraiser, I mean I appreciate what y'all are helping us understand the historical right and I thank Commissioner Mitchell for all of them helping us get the tools over there to help y'all to help us do better. Thank you, Dave, one more time. It was about the data. You had no idea anyway, so it was almost like as if you didn't want to know. I don't want to hear it. Right? But at the same point, but then we're, we're complaining about we ain't taking care of people. And apparently, like, okay, well, it's been here all along. You shouldn't have to raise the rate if in fact you had money and you just left it on the floor. You didn't collect what you were supposed to. And that's what I'm like, I'm, I'm highlighting that. So y'all like, okay, pay attention. Learn this, guys. So that y'all go forth and make decisions, y'all see how all this fits together, how you need data. So, and, and you guys just gotta work together. So anyway, that's all I had. I, I appreciate it, but I just, when you said what you just said, like, wait a minute, what now? I mean, every year he's coming with a new thing. Okay, well, we didn't do this, Commissioner Robinson. Okay, we did, Commissioner Robinson, we missed this. And so those are the type of things we need to hear so that um, when we make our, our own decisions at the end of the year, doing the budget, what we choose to sponsor, that that's gonna be important to know. Well, who, what do we get behind? What do we, our next investment? Again, we only got a nickel. <laughs> We're gonna be arguing over a million bucks. But, but again, but somebody's gonna get that. And through the collective will of democracy, the majority will make that work and where we need to go. But again, to offset, recognize we're going to take care of y'all. We don't want to raise the rates. But if there's stuff that we should be collecting and there's a historical, can I go back and get it? Can I go get that money? Let me explain one more thing to you yeah. since you're on that point. Please. How good this new system is. And we, we both love it. Uh, you know, we went live July 18. And we know the whole system is bad. We've known that for a long time. Under the new system, it recalculated so far parts that we've got in there, and it recognized that we're missing on P 
penalty and interest, $163,000. So my staff right now is going back and working to collect that $163,000 because the old system wouldn't recognize it and their calculations were off. So we gotta go back and rework some of that. And I'm just trying to show you how this system is paying for itself, basically. Because it's, it's calculating and catching those things that we have never captured before. And we're able to go back and collect some of those funds. So we're gonna be collecting missing funds that we pretty much never collected. Them. So that's just to your point, because you're on that subject. One last question. So our exemptions went up a lot. Is that because people were filing homestead exemptions? Or what What, what kind of increase? Homestead report, the exemptions are, yeah. So this year, we have a lot more uh, yeah. exemptions. Yeah. <laughs> it comes with growth. Mm -hmm. okay. And conservation, you had a lot of? No, conservation was pretty much constant. Okay. Um, yeah, the conservation use, it's the, it's the portion that goes into Excel. Okay, got it. All right. And later you will get to where you are carving out what is abated versus what is exempt. So uh, the abatement properties, that, uh, right. Abatement properties now are counted as exempt mm -hmm. in our system, in, 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 in winter. Uh -huh. They are currently working uh -huh. on allocating it to abated properties as opposed to exempt mm -hmm. and so that we can just identify abated properties separately. And then we can account for them once they hit the 100% and they will go back to yes. the regular. Right. Got right. It. And, and the exemptions go up because we have floating, floating homestead. If the appraised value goes up, the exemption goes up on revalue. And um, reval numbers are reval numbers. Reval numbers are going to count as not real growth based on how it's in the system. So properties that existed before, yes, um, regardless of homestead, it's going to count as a revaluation if it increased. So yes. Lunch is not here yet. I've been mostly served in a few minutes, but it's not, it has not arrived. So it's your pleasure. Oh, it is? They're working on it. That's what I'm saying, working on it. So we can have a quick presentation when they're working. Yes, ma'am. And our next presentation is David Good, who will up brief you this on our SWAS performance, on what we're trending, how we're trending, and just to give you just some specific details about SWAS right now, our 2016 SWAS. Thank you so much, David. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Good morning, Board of Commissioners. I'm Madam Chair, uh, staff. Uh, right here, what you see is that we have our SPAS discussion coming up. Uh, next slide, please. And as you guys know, in the 2016 SPAS, we were anticipating about $147 million uh, going throughout the county. And the county's portion was going to be $106 million. And of that $106 million, Transportation received 51% uh, of it. Uh, fire, uh, EMS, and digital radio system, we received 32%. And the last part of the was 17%. Next slide, please. And of course, program management and fees, they were equaled out to be the other six million. So 4% went to program management, the other 2% went to fees, lawyer fees, and things like that. Um, if you look on for the 2022 spots, for you guys' discussion, I believe this is what you um, landed on is that public safety, uh, which we know is part of the uh, entire five-year strategic plan, was that was top 40.8 um, percent. 
transportation should include infrastructure and also included um, economic development. That was um, also number two and three for the citizens when it came to the strategic plan. Is at 27.8%. Of course, we know that public health is not something that SPOTS can push on, even though that's a big part of what the citizens want. SPOTS cannot do anything with that. And then parks, direct, and libraries is 20.4%. And the last is facilities, 11%. Things like a transfer station. So those are kind of like giving you an idea of what can come out of that. Um, and then, of course, program management is going to be assessed upon you guys' decisions later. Uh, next slide, please. And this is the last slide. A lot of times the commissioners you ask for to see things side by side. So right now you see side by side transportation. Um, this time 51 million, uh, fire EMS 32 million, and then parks and recs 17 million. We ended up doing a reforecast last year based upon what the commissioners were seeing that we had a lot of increases. So each one increased from total 106 million to 118 million. And then take 118 million and subtract that from the different fees that we collect to sell down to about 112 million is what we you know, is what we're anticipating seeing at the end of the uh, spot. So 118 million we totally see for Douglas County, and then after fees, maybe closer to 112. But we'll see what we get at the end of the year. Uh, and that's it for my slide presentation. Are there any questions? If you guys want to see some more detail, there is another presentation uh, that you guys can look at. Can you show us, yeah, uh, do you have um, trending for our monthly spot, um, spot intake? <coughs> Thank you. Rosalyn, do you by any chance have the, the trending information for the SPLOS that you know you present every month in the financial meeting? Can you? Oh, yes. Um, and then David, if you can Okay. And one thing that we're seeing, so uh, since the beginning of this last year, SPLOS was started in April, we are trending about three, a little bit over $3 million each month for the, um, since uh, the beginning of, um, of April 2022. And before that, we were trending um, close to around 2.8, 2.9. And overall, we have been trending what uh, the total size was 2.3 million is what it was from 2017 all the way to now. So that's 2.3 million if you take our beginning years, which is closer to 1.9, 2 million, now up to 2.8 to $3 million. So that's kind of where we're trending. And uh, before this year, we were about $668,000 above projections. And then lately, in the last six to seven months, we've been about a million dollars over. So, right. So that's that infusion of cash that is being spent. Uh, but again, we just trying to, we had a conversation earlier. I don't know if you were here. Uh, we we're talking about just um, not only just property tax, but also SPAS and how do we, you know, again, we're trying to anticipate decisions we may have to do in the future. So uh, I just want to see that data. Uh, but if you don't have it, it's okay. Don't. don't. Yeah. Yeah. She has. Do you want me to read it out? Or? Oh, okay. Put it up there. Okay. Yeah, I'll send over there. Okay. Oh, I thought they wanted the trends of the region. Okay. The trends of the region. That's what we just wanted to change. Okay. The trends of the region. That's what we just wanted to change. Okay. The trends of the region. That's what we just wanted to change. Okay. The trends of the region. That's what we just wanted to change. Okay. The trends of the region. That's what we just wanted to change. Okay. 14 million, what are, where are we? Right now, I believe that we're now trending closer to 17 million. Is that, is that right, Ronson? Yes. We're trending now closer to 17 million. That is correct. Yes. Yeah. So we're trending closer to 17 million. So each, each month that we go over, like the last two months, we've been a million over. So um, in the beginning of this last year, which was in April, we were about 15, you know, 14, 15. Now we're even higher than that on our proceeds. So each month, even though we get a million, 72.26% of that comes to the county. The rest of it goes up to the city of Douglas Bill and the other cities. Right, so seven hundred thousand dollars out of a million, just for easy yes. math. Um, so again, can we apply our percentages accordingly? Right. I, I guess in fact that's what we're uh uh you have the That's what I'm trying to get to. Okay, I got um, just to pay go and how we apply Back to we had a conversation about transportation and we're pulling everything forward for um, next year to now. And so again, we're this is reinforcing, it's tying it all together. Just 
And one thing I do know is that uh, when I first one I looked at was transportation was at 51 uh, percent, 51 million. We saw when you hear the new numbers that was closer to 60 million dollars, 51 percent. So it went almost down to 10 percent. But if they're looking for the pay, pay go and the actual remit or just, just the trainers would be go back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So just want to see Yeah. Um, and what you see before you is the blue is um, year 2021 yep. and comparing with the year 2022. And for instance, if we look at um, the remit for um, June in 2021, it was um, 2.7 million, but in 2022, it's 3.1 million. Say them one more time, first. Okay. Um, 2021, yep. last year, 2,754,690. And this year, three million one hundred and forty-three thousand and fifty dollars. Gotcha. One thousand. Is that what you were looking for? Do you well, need some more information? No, that that was it. Just that was like it. I mean, you guys, have, I mean, that's good data just to see. No, oh. thank you. Yeah. You good? Any other questions for David Good or Boston Court? That for David Corbin and David Corbin. We have a question for David Corbin. So the projections that we have here is because everything is good. There is an influx of money. There is right. So when we talk about the plots moving forward. We're gonna look at the same trending for 2021. Do we do we I'm just trying to anticipate, like moving forward, like because we know the cost of everything will go up. Whatever building we build, we know it's going to be more because cost of materials are more, right? So even though we may take in three million dollars, the cost of something, you know, may be thirty to forty percent higher. Correct. So that would equate to us taking in about the same amount Correct. that we took in last year. Am I looking at that right? Yes. So let me make sure. I you are seeing higher monthly collections, right? right? But you're right. also saying everything, everything is else rise, right? Yeah. So it's like watching one hand clap. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a good question. <laughs> <point. laughs> right. But you so, can you take that into consideration when we're looking at what we're going to do. Yes. So, my, and my, I guess that's why we're on this topic. You know, we can finish 2022, which I think you'll see that trend continue for a while, mm -hmm. but ultimately that number is going to go back. I'm not going to say it's going to rest totally, but you're going to see that number get cut. But my guess is your expenses won't go down as fast. Right? The, the other side of the coin, you're not seeing the cost of building something is still going to remain still going higher for a lot longer than, than, than that. There's going to be a, a disparity for a period of time. So, so to, to the point, but the spending power will be less. In other words, we've got a dollar. Whereas before, we could do two things, now we can only do one. We still got a dollar, but you, you won't be able to do it as much. Um, and so, again, and this is what I always get, I, I, how we, we, we allow the vendors and people on the outside to charge us rate. They, they, we, we, we pay their inflation. But yet, from an internal perspective, and take care of, we, we complain about payroll. We paying their payroll. We we paying their, and that's when like guys, y'all see what we do sometimes. Our perspectives, and from government that we're taking care of everybody else. That they say, well, this is what the budget is. This is what it came in at. This is what they, the proposal, and it's inflated. And we see that, and we're like, okay, and we pay it. Then we get righteous, I mean, or self righteous, but we don't take care of our own, and that's the balancing act. Like, guys, you got to give room. It's both. I'm not saying that it's it's not an evil versus good, but you got to balance it. 
and you got to take care of these people. And so while, again, one more time, I'm hearing the argument, like, I don't disagree. But you got to have some discipline on this thing because you can't, it's how you do it. It's how you thread this needle. And so that's what we need to do to be, we got to be a little bit more accurate. Um, and because you guys have a lot of obligations. And how are you going to do this? And it can be done, but that means you can't do as much. I'm bringing back the point. You can't do all that. Great strategic plan. You only get, as opposed to fire parties, you ain't gonna be able to tackle too. Right. That that's it's just too. It's just where you are right now. You gotta have it down. You can't you can't you can't swallow all this at once. And uh, but anyway, you guys got it. Y'all will bring before us something that's reasonable. And that's what I'm trying to set. Y'all leadership set down. We're looking for something that's reasonable. Don't make us figure it out. Y'all figure it out and say, well, we're recommend something. Take a position, show us based on you. We've given you everything you need. We've given you money, we've given you tools, we've given you people. Now we need you guys to show us, like, okay, now how y'all gonna play this game? Yes. Yeah, are you okay with this? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're good. Thank you. Any other questions for David Good? Starting out, resuming our meeting. I will rearrange the agenda. I want uh, the one for uh, Chief Financial Officer to come back up and just, again, just rehash what the village rate proposals and things that you're proposing to the Board of Commissioners, and then we'll go from there. And the Board of Commissioners will engage in discussions, and then we will decide to so we can make sure that you and our clerk receive the information so we can get it. Uh, okay. This information advertised in the newspaper. Okay. Can we put my power purpose right up on the back one side? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed their lunch. Don't fall asleep on me. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, as I said earlier, uh, on the five-year history and the current year levy, the tax commission confirmed that these numbers are good to go with, so I'm, I'm okay now. I, I had a little panic attack a few minutes ago, because I'm like, he said these numbers are not fine. I'm like, oh, it's not going to work. But we're going to go with these numbers. And so based on these numbers, if we maintain the current net millage rate of 12.563, that would um, equal to $75.4 million in the total m and taxes levy. We're using a 95% collection rate. I heard him say that they've been collecting 99, but I'm, I'm conservative. So um, if we do a 95% collection rate, that would be $71.6 million. And based on the line item in the budget on revenue side for current year taxes, we right now have budgeted $59.5 million. So that's a difference of $12 million. And as I stated earlier, <coughs> excuse me, my recommendation would be to use that money to fund the pay enhancements that were done earlier this year and for next year as well, because I think that equates to about almost, eight, uh, almost $12 million, um, according to Rosalind figure she gave me earlier this morning. Um, if we go with this 12.563, it is higher than the rollback rate um, you find it of 11.927 so um, as I stated earlier on a home with a fair market value of $150,000 at the 40% um, assessed value their millage um, that taxes would be $678.40 um, at the current net millage rate the rollback rate it would be $644.06 a difference of $34.34 so that's kind of where we are. And again, if we're not rolling back, we would need to have the three public hearings. And as the clerk stated earlier, right now they're scheduled 
for August the 16th at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. if you decide to maintain the net millage. And um, the third hearing would be August the 25th, I believe you said at 10 a.m., um, a special call meeting and adoption that day as well. And I understand that I think the school board is adopting, did we say the 16th? Did they said the 16th. August 16th, so that would be in advance of when we have to adopt ours, so we can do them both at the same time. Okay, is that what you need, Madam Chair? That's it. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Wow. So, more this is the time where we can all wait in and take the next position and talk about what our plans are as we go into the report coming in. So, uh, I share so many of like that. Start off with our uh, chairman of finance. No, I got it. No problem. You don't, you don't need a mic. Oh, sure. Thank you, Chair. All right, I'll be quick with this. We don't have to go over this. Um, uh, Dave, is Dave Corbin still here? Yes, I'm uh, present. All right. So, with uh, 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 Madam CFO, yes, to both of you. All right, so here we are. We're setting the real rate, which pays for the current budget. Uh, we have a policy that we typically apply. And so does that policy apply here in this particular case where um, out of this we will set aside, what, 25% or some magic number? Uh, do we apply this like we did uh, grow this year? Um, should we be applying, setting aside 25% that goes somewhere into capital and the rest of it goes to, to your point, wherever you want to park it and to your point, payroll. Um, that's where I'm at right now. Is apply 25% toward capital, the rest to payroll. So, <clears throat> I think the, the answer to the question is we will follow the policy, which is you have a fund, minimum fund balance requirement of 15% this year? Yes. So anything above that, yep. a portion of that money will then be allocated to a capital fund. Uh, and then you you can designate what you want to do out of that capital fund going forward. Um, it may be helpful. I was going to suggest that I don't you want to wait down chair to everybody comments. I think it's important for Rob for Rosalind to put up part of her two pager because I wanted I, I, I just want to make sure we point out something because I think with Commissioner Robinson's question I can answer it better with the. With the, with the document up there this one here all right no no, no problem so I, again i'm just weighing in no rollback and right. again i just want to make sure whatever the board does take in consideration capital and your expenditure of exposure <coughs> so keep it simple that's all i got in the uh, un unspent column, <laughs> the trending at least at that time. And um, if you look at the millage rates of all the surrounding counties, we're way above everybody. And we're talking about wanting people to come to Douglas County, this affects it, the amount of the tax, especially with businesses too. So I'm just not ready to commit, gotta do some more studying. However, when you advertise, if you advertise no rollback and you decide to roll it back later, you can. You, can, you can't go higher than what you advertise, but you can go lower. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Batter. Mm -hmm. Certainly as, you know, we look back on the previous years and where we've had rollbacks, which I learned very quickly when I first came in office, rollbacks can be good until you roll out of money. And what happened, we rolled everything down to almost just zero. Uh, and as my uh, Commissioner Mitchell 
remind us quite often, sometimes that amount is just not, um, it really doesn't really have a huge impact when you roll it back. Every household probably grab about $25 or so. And you take that money and crunch it down. So since I've been in office, we rolled back about 4.5 million, really closer to 5 million. And um, the, the pandemic taught me a lesson. Um, certainly we were at a point, we were on the wall, and, uh, and it's unexpected. We have uh, monkey pox that just hit. It's here, and it's uh, right now at epidemic status and could perhaps convert to a pandemic status. Who knows? Uh, so I don't know what other virus is coming down the pipe, but what I don't want to do is see us uh, rock bottom if something happens again, and this pandemic has changed me and my perception. So I am saying, I, am, I, I don't want to roll back. I just don't want to raise it. Just leave it as is. And I still question the, the calculation or the perception here in the state of Georgia. To me, if you don't change it, you didn't do anything. You left it the same. To me, it's not a tax increase, but that's something we're working on with our legislation our state legislators to see if they can change that uh, narrative because it's not an increase. We just leave it at the same. Yeah. So um, I, right now, we, we got to steady. We need to hold, hold steady. We don't know what's coming down the pipe. This pandemic has changed all of our lives tremendously. And I knew at one point the citizens were just upset and saying, you got to come out. We don't have to bother you right now. I just want to stay on the wall. So, no roll back with me. So we have four commissioners to stand, um, no roll back. And then we have one commissioner that she just want to wait and see what the numbers look like. So um, there we are. And Chair. Chairman of the Finance Committee. Yeah, I just want to confirm. So the staff have their marching orders. Yes, sir. So we're going to maintain it so we can advertise what we are at prepared. And then we're going to get um, do bonds and bonds projection and all of that as well. To make sure we do the 25% capital as policy states and then the rest to other expenditures, whether it's um, the salaries, which is my recommendation, or whatever the board is. Understood. Okay, Madam Chair, I just wanted to cover that. And again, yes, I, I do acknowledge, you know, again, you know, the need to pause and look at the SS commissioners. Um, but it's important that you lead. As for my house, this is how we go. I can't give emphasis to what other people are doing, whether it's a school board, a city, another municipality. Right. I know what's going on in my house. I know y'all got payroll. I don't care what the school board is doing at this moment, nor the city of Douglasville, but I'm recognizing what we are responsible for. It's like, okay, guys, how you gonna pay for this? How you gonna continue with the narrative that we need to keep paying Keep taking care of y'all, give you more increases, take care of unfinished business, deal with compression, but yet, how are you gonna fund it if you roll it back? Well, if you do roll back, that means something else gets squeezed. Oh boy. And, and so that's my point. I, I don't need to study anything per se as an individual. It's like, you already got stuff that's encumbered. I'm okay with the future if you choose, you choose to contract, you choose to constrict. I'm okay with that, but guys, y'all have obligations right now, and if you don't discipline yourself, you won't feel it. And some people will let you go off the cliff. They'll argue, just, just, just to disrupt it, in case you don't know what you're doing. Make you pause on your own <laughs> position. Uh, but again, this is not necessarily a vote in the sense that we're just giving direction. We will vote officially, Madam Chair. I want to make sure this, this administrative concurrence for y'all to move forward, do what you're supposed to do, and we will vote formally after our meetings. Is that correct? For lawyers, everybody? Yes, sir. For the record. Yes, sir. That's all. Thank you. Our next speaker is Chris Puffrey. He should be here momentarily. Board. We have, uh, he was supposed to be here at 1 p.m., so we have two minutes. Um, I'll just give you the time if you don't mind waiting on him. And Chris Pumper is our last presentation. Yes, sir. Okay. Deputy County Minister, you have a long. You know what? I want to give our attorney Coleman just an opportunity to come up and say hello and introduce himself to the public. We're on TV. Come <laughs> on 
Michael Cole Col Col does a recorded. very fine job. You'll be a recorder. I just want to just say hello. Just <laughs> not asking you to do a horse and pony. Mm -hmm. Just, just love. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to come and, and uh, say hello to everybody. I've had the opportunity to work closely with most of you, and it's been uh, quite a pleasure. Uh, I love being in, um, in Douglas County, and I um, love working, love working with the people. Um, other than the uh, chief uh, financial advisor, which is going to be a little bit difficult, but other than that, uh, <laughs> It's been a real pleasure. No, seriously, it's been a, it's been a wonderful work with a group of committed and dedicated public servants, uh, all of whom are, uh, work hard and, are, and try to do the public's business in the right way. Um, that's impressive, and I'm happy to be associated with this group, and I appreciate the opportunity to work with you and uh, serve you. And um, so um, I will end my little speech with a with a, with, a, with a question. Um, why is it that California has fewer, even though it's much bigger, has fewer, um, has more lawyers, and New Jersey has more toxic waste dumps? Does anybody know the answer to that? The answer is New, New, Jersey, got, New Jersey got first choice. <laughs> 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 Uh, New Jersey got first choice. Oh, okay. <laughs> and they chose the toxic word, brother and lawyer. Everybody's a crook out there. <laughs> Everybody loves lawyers. So, but anytime any of you need my help about anything, please don't don't hesitate to, to call. We try to be uh, very responsive and, and, and try to be, you know, very, very service oriented. So uh, I've enjoyed the opportunity and I look forward to continuing to do so. Thank you very much. Can we ask a question? Please. Any questions? Okay, so how is it coming so far as far as you know getting your mind is roughly what six months, seven months in, give or take maybe eight. But you know, at the turn now, um, how has it come as far as assessing our approach to legal? Um, you know, how do you move us forward? You talk so, about what moving us forward, how do you legally move us forward? So us? so I think first of all, I, I've been trying to get a better handle and understanding of the various departments and functions of the government. Uh, I think it's been coming uh, great. Um, I've been a bit surprised at the volume of work. It's been a, a, quite a volume of requests and, and uh, for assistance. And that's been, that, that caught me a little bit off guard. Um, so, um, but, but it's been great and we've tried to uh, rise to the occasion. I think we're looking at trying to put you know, processes in place uh, to help, you know, move help us to provide service in a streamlined way. We, we've implemented a contract review process, still a working process, but I think it's helped a great deal. But we've kind of um, made the, the contract review process streamlined. I think it's, it's, it goes, it's, a, it's a process that's followed. It's easy to track the contract. I think it's helped, even though we're still working on it. Uh, we're looking at trying to implement, you know, hopefully over the next, you know, several months get more of those kinds of processes in place uh, so that we can, you know, work in a more streamlined manner and meet the needs that uh, that arise for the for the the work of the Douglas County. Gotcha. So but I do think it's coming great. I mean I think it's uh, you know we, we are getting the chance to, I think we've worked almost with every department. You know, we've done things for um, code enforcement, zoning Know, work for a tax assessor's office. Do you work with the constitutional officers at all? Any of those guys? Any of our other elected peers at all? I have worked with the constitutional office. I worked with Judge Peterson some. I've worked with uh, Clerk Stimbridge and met with her and worked with her. Um, I've had the, the pleasure to work with uh, the higher esteemed tax commissioner. Um, but he doesn't call on me very often. He know, probably knows this is business better than me, so he doesn't call on me very often. But I have the opportunity to work with him, uh, the opportunity to work with the, uh, I haven't worked closely with the sheriff himself, but I've worked a lot with his representatives on a number of different things. Litigation, uh, just a broad variety of matters that I've worked with uh, the sheriff's office on. Uh, so I've had the opportunity to, 
to work with and, and, and work with all of them. And um, not had any real problems, unless it's something I don't know, but as far as I know, no real problems. Awesome. So, yes, ma'am. I know, I know you come in on the litigation side of things, right? And you don't actually see something until a suit or something hits our desk and it hits yours at the same time. But in, in seeing those and in working with those, um, have you had a chance to work with Tiffany and Fred or, or others um, in leadership, including the sheriff, to say, hey, there may be some things that we need to look at as far as training and processes to keep down some of this litigation because you know taxpayers don't know we spend out a lot of money in in you know in litigation and, and, and those types of things and that's one way we could cut if we had training if we have you know people all on the same page and doing things and, and so you know just you've been here a long time not in Douglas County but you've been in been a while. right a while so <laughs> no, yeah, not that I, you're 88 <laughs> long but not quite that long. Right. But I, I have not had an opportunity to work closely with, with Fred and Tiffany on that aspect of things, but you know, we worked on other things, and I think one of the goals is to try to, once we get a better handle on litigation, I mean, the county has insurance for a lot of litigation, right. so we, our cost comes in terms of the deductibles that we have to pay to get to those insurance. So one of the things that I, you know, I want to look at with, with management is Right. What the insurance picture looks like. Is there a way to get, um, you know, get our deductibles lower, and some of, for some of the insurance coverage? Are there areas where we can maybe save money by self-insuring in some areas? Uh, those are some of the things that risk management and I will look at and review over time. It will take some time, but uh, and then in terms of training, and Fred and I have talked about, um, and, and Tiffany have talked about setting up some training sessions for officers, things that. We can do um, primarily so far the personnel area. Mm -hmm. uh, we've actually discussed that several times. Okay. Areas that we can sit down with and see if you're, you know, taking a personnel action. These are things that you have to do for a married employee, for non-married employees. Mm -hmm. uh, we've discussed also dealing with the, uh, the structure and looking at our uh, form of employment agreements to get them updated. So those kinds of structural institutional changes. Uh, we've talked some about yeah. and uh, we'll be moving forward over with those uh, over time okay. uh, we, we, we don't want to really I mean, we're trying to gradually you know implement some some i think structural changes without you know dramatically Turn on the change, apple uh, <laughs> the apple cart right. exactly so that, i'm confident that we'll be able to do that over time Okay, thank you. Thank you again. Mike, Mike, I, I would like to say that, that thank you publicly for one of the issues that uh, just as the HR uh, person uh, and coming here for the county, you know, the whole aspect of dealing with constitutional officers and judicial and what have you, and who exactly is covered on the merit system has always kind of been a challenge. Right. And uh, and we have ironed that out since, uh, since uh, you know, uh, uh, these last couple of years, we, we, we've really ironed that out. Right. And uh, in particular, we've taken a, a, a good step forward this past uh, year. So uh, I do want to uh, thank you for that. And, uh, you know, just getting those, uh, uh, the, being mindful of those new uh, constitutional officers that are coming on, right. uh, who, whoever the new elected officials are that are coming on, getting them to understand that they have to opt in or opt out and what that all means for uh, for their department and their right. employees. Yeah, that is an area we've worked on. So I, I just worked on so many things. It's hard to keep up with them. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's an area we work together on. And I think that's an inclusive. You know, it's been a pleasure working with both uh, Fred and Tiffany, both very responsive and you know, very good public service. Very nice about what they do. I've had a lot of terrific and great as well from the clerk's office. And that's a real, uh, it's a real benefit to be able to, you know, call and respond quickly. They know where things are, and it's just also extremely helpful to me. And, uh, and I'll say the same about, and I was only kidding about uh, finance. They've been true terrific as well. So one of the real, again, having been around a long time, one of the things I've learned is that, you know, People are very, very, the people are very, very important as part of the 
you know, and, 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 and you know, you got to have people who are good people that you, that you enjoy working with. And, um, you know, I, I've been extremely pleased by that aspect of this job. The people that, that you have on board are true professionals. Roslyn, David, they've been super supportive in terms of getting financial issues and work to finance the data. So it's been a real, you know, real good experience so far. Busy, but good. I <laughs> see <laughs> the distinguished Mr. Pumpkin is now in the room, so All right. I'll step aside and uh, allow him to take over. Thank you, Thank you. Let's give our county attorney. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good to be with you all this afternoon. It's not every day. We're missing one. Okay. Um, I know I'm, I'm after lunch, so I've got you know, maybe that. Oh, you're there. I, I didn't see you. You just got hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I may have a little bit of that after lunch fatigue, but hopefully I can keep you entertained enough. Do I control this from right Yes, sir. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Um, so I'm, I'm still 20 minutes. Is that right? No. Nope. No. You're good. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I prepared for 20, so we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to slide All right. So I'll talk about just some key project updates um, for you all, um, a little bit of our activity report and some things about the future, and then any questions that you might have. But if you have any questions in between there, feel free to ask. I'm going to stick to the 20 minutes. Uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, I'll put these up here. Um, this is just kind of some highlights of some uh, events and things that we've done over the past, not over the past year, but up year to date this year. Um, you probably don't know what they are, so I'll explain them. Um, the first top right is area development. That is a site consultants uh, conference uh, that uh, Breezy attended back in uh, this, this past summer up in Virginia, really talking to consultants about, about Douglas County, about Douglasville, all the attributes of the community as they lead projects. Same thing with Consultant Connect. I did one of their uh, events uh, in Scottsdale and have another one uh, this upcoming month. Date, uh, DCD stands for Data Center Dynamics. And so that is a conference that we um, had a booth at um, out in Silicon Valley to talk about uh, data center users and even talking to those who are not just data center users but those that really kind of are ancillary to that space. Um, and then South by Southwest um, participated in that event um, talking to uh, technology entrepreneurs about opportunities to do business um, in Douglas County. So I'm going to talk about some key, key projects and, and, I, and I really just kind of keep in mind, you know, a lot of opportunities for companies to come into the area is dependent upon the real estate options that exist in the area. And so a lot of the real estate options that exist in the area, you know, primarily are retail, um, residential, <coughs> and industrial. I would say those are the, the, the primary three uh, real estate opportunities in the community. However, what we all know is folks want to see more office development. They want to see more mixed use development and those things come in. They want to see more office jobs come in. That necessitates us developing office pro product in order for that to be attractive. It's just not going to pop up and someone says, I'm going to come do you know a 500 person you know office project without an office development tied to it. So it's imperative for us to be proactive on that side um, in order for those things to happen. So uh, Riverside West um, is a 500 acre industrial development that started back in 2012, I believe, um, with the intent of that being kind of a warehouse distribution park. Um, this is the park where Gordon Food Service resides. Um, 
and, and, and now Microsoft resides. So this is that part where they, where they reside. Um, there are a couple of other spec buildings where there are some users that are going into those buildings in there, but this park is just about complete. Um, there is another data center um, called Project KISS, which we hope to announce later um, this, this fall. But Project KISS is taking up one, another one of their spaces and then hopefully some more space in that development. So that development is starting to come to its, its full life expectancy a lot sooner than they anticipated um, on that site. They are under construction on additional pad sites uh, over there, but I'll tell you, there's, like, there's, there's a bunch of these companies like this hovering around, waiting you know, on those to be ready. So that site won't last long. And this site was really kind of the primary site for most of the projects that came in the door for us. We all know, we all you know, remember Fox Hall that was approved earlier this year. That project, I would say, I would define that as on pause right now. On pause basically because if you all kind of just think through the timeline, I think that was approved back in January. And maybe within like 30 days of that, the FOMC started talking about interest rates, and then the bond market started going all different directions. And you already know what was happening with construction costs. So it got pitched in two ways. Construction costs went up on the deal, and interest rates from the bond market you know, went up. So that really started to pinch you know, their ability to go full forward. So just kind of waiting to try to see if those interest rates pieces you know, come down a little bit. I don't foresee the cost coming down drastically. Um, the only other option with that regard is if you start drastically changing the project. And none of us really want to see that happen. Um, we want to see that project come to its full fruition. But those are probably the two main issues that are holding, those are the two main issues holding that project uh, on pause uh, right now. Um, the trails, which we're all very near and dear and familiar with. Um, so, you know, that you all approved the, the rezoning for that. Um, a, Few months ago so that rezoning um, now has led to the residential component of the development being under contract so that is for the townhomes and the apartments that would come into place there the anticipation is that q2 of 23 that they would break ground on those two those two components um, we're in active discussions on a medical office um, user going in and putting a medical office there and then also um, a hotel going in onto that site as well so those are active discussions. Um, there are some other institutional discussions that are happening right now about some of the office sites. Uh, so we're, we're having those discussions, actually have a meeting with that uh, later this month uh, to try and advance those and hopefully take up one of those office sites uh, on, on the development. Coming back to my point when I opened up with, you need the product in order to be able to have serious conversations about these things. Um, last night, I'm assuming everything went well on the variance or what, uh, what it was for, for the studios. So that clears the way for the land disturbance permit. Um, if anybody's driven down Fairburn Road, you can see the crews out there kind of clearing off the trails um, in order to access the property. Um, and that final piece allows them to go uh, obtain their land disturbance permit so then they can start clearing, clearing that site. Um, our hope is that we'll be able to have an announcement by the latter part of this month, if not the early part of September, just really announcing the project. Uh, uh, just a reminder, just to let you know this, the Atlanta Business Chronicle is running a feature um, this week um, on Douglas County. They wanted to cover this, but Holder was just like, yeah, we're not quite ready yet for an announcement. I'm pretty sure they put some type of coverage in there. I don't know what it is, I haven't seen it, but the editors have run some type of story on that. So. Uh, there'll be a, a, a report on Douglas County um, in that. They change the way they do market reports. So historically, it would be you sit down, you come up with a bunch of storylines, and then they go do the stories on them. They're not doing that anymore. They're actually just doing true reports. So we really don't know what the report's going to say. <laughs> but it should, it'll be positive, but we just don't know the whole content of the report. Um, so just year-to-date activity. Um, this actually is a snapshot of our Q2 um, activity, which you see right here on the screen. Um, on Friday, we're hosting our next quarterly investor meeting. You all should have gotten invites for that. Hopefully you can attend. This is where we kind of do the quarterly updates of activity over the quarter as it relates to economic development. Talk about what's, what's happening, what's upcoming. We also have keynote speakers come in. This Friday, we have two site selection consultants coming in, one from Collier's 
and one from Jones Lang LaSalle. And they'll be there kind of talking about what's happening in the marketplace. So all these companies that we're trying to recruit, they'll be sitting there talking about what, what, ex, what are their clients currently experiencing. We'll be talking about incentives, we'll be talking about what's the impact of inflation you know, on projects today, the trends that are happening in workforce. So it's a really great opportunity to just kind of hear what's happening in the marketplace for all of us to really just kind of be educated and make sure that we're prepared um, for, for recruitment of projects um, in the future. Um, we announced the Norma Group earlier this year. Thank you all for, for your support of that. Um, you all may have seen, I think last week, we had the news come out about Home Chef, or week before last, Home Chef. Um, there'll be about 800 jobs, $37 million investment um, over off of Skyview, that's in the city of Douglasville. Um, home Chef makes all of the home prepared meals that you find in Kroger and also ship to your home. So really excited about that um, project. We have some pending um, announcements that are coming. So Project KISS and Project NEO are both uh, data centers uh, and then Project Silver, which we all know is what we're waiting on to be able to officially announce that, that project. Um, from a policy standpoint, I uh, worked with uh, Switch uh, and a conglomerate of data centers um, from across the state in the legislature this session, uh, we testified in front of the um, one of the Ways and Means committees uh, about the impact of data centers, you know, on local communities. Um, if you re recall, there was a bill a few years ago. Uh, it was called the Switch Bill that allowed for a sales tax exemption. Um, that bill actually had a sunset of 2028, which I don't know why it was so soon. But if you think about it, it was enacted in 2018 or 2019. It takes probably three or four years to even develop a data center. So by the time you get up and running, you're like only five years in order to use you know, the, uh, the program. So that program was, uh, we were successful in getting that um, uh, approved. And now that sunset goes to 2038. So that gives a more runway for groups to be able to take advantage of that, which then helps attract more of these data centers to the state. So um, we played an active role in that. Um, so just kind of um, future events and activity. Uh, one of the big things is really going to be kind of navigating um, what happens with this, this land use plan on the northwest side and then also looking at the, the plan or what happens on this side of the corridor. Um, really excited about moving forward on what happens around the library um, and some opportunities there. We've had some discussions about. Um, we are hosting an economic development summit in November, so November 4th. Um, say the dates will go out for that um, probably later this month, I believe. And, and the goal there is that we're bringing people from all across the region to Douglasville um, to <coughs> learn about best practices for economic development. It's not us kind of running the summit. I mean, we're putting it on, but it's not us on stage all day. We'll be bringing in speakers from all over to talk about trends and best practices in, the, in, in economic development. I um, mean, inviting all of our peers from neighboring counties and, and so forth to come out, out to Douglasville. Um, part of our marketing efforts is, um, is, is marketing to the state level economic developers and, um, and regional developers. And so we will have an event at the Braves on August 19th. Uh, and so they'll I think they're playing the Astros. And so if anybody would like to attend, let me know. Um, we'll have a bunch of economic developers who are leading these projects um, that are coming into the state, all of those folks that are responsible for that, showing them the attributes of Douglasville and Douglas County, you know, why we're a great place to do business. Um, for our Regional Marketing Alliance, we're doing something similar um, a week later um, with all of the counties here in Atlanta. Um, I've, talked, I've already talked about the trails um, and some of, in marketing, the active sites that are there. So when we go to these conferences, we're actually taking those master plans and showing them what opportunities exist on that, uh, on that site. And I mentioned some institutional um, um, users that we're uh, talking to about um, being on that, that, um, that site there. And then we have our, another data center conference uh, in November. So that's just kind of a snapshot highlight of what's been going on. Um, I'm sure there are a ton of questions and I am here to answer your questions. Questions for Chris? Yeah. Vice Chairman. Um, All right. Chris, uh, we, we had a conversation earlier. Uh, we're, um, obviously, this is mid year, um, uh, mid year uh, meeting for the Board of 
commissioners and setting the most rates, etc. Um, um, Steve Balfour and uh, a tax commissioner, Greg Bickworth here at Roller, and we were talking about um, uh, abatements and things like that and, and um, how are we doing over there. So how is our current, um, I guess, I don't know, stable of people who are on the books for sure. abatements? How, how is that coming? Are they in compliance, etc.? Every everyone is in compliance, but for one, and I'll tell you what that but for one is, and the reason what's going on with that. But I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Everyone's in compliance, but for one, um, we have speculation, but we don't have confirmation that Bang Energy is going to vacate their their project. Um, so that's the but for one, and it's because you know, we don't really know what's going on there. Um, we've been working with their consultant to try and get more insight into what's happening with that project. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they just won the um, deal of the year for the state last year. It, it's I, I don't know what it is about that particular property, but that's the second project. The first one was Keurig. They got the deal of the year for that one, <laughs> and this one got the deal of the year. Um, so we, we don't know we don't know officially, but that is what we suspect um, is is happening um, with with that with that project. And so, other than that, and, and I would say with them, they hadn't even gotten to the point of even um, um, really getting started. Um, so they're not one who had been they have actually haven't even received any abatements to date, um, mainly because when they filed. They filed their documents late, and so they ended up paying the. They ended up taking on the full load of taxes for 2021. So if they were to be on an abatement, they would have started that this year. Um, and I think the way theirs is structured, they have kind of a fixed pilot on the real estate, and then they have kind of a scheduled abatement on the equipment. And so that fixed pilot, well, is. Is it 400000 a year, I believe, that they would be paying? Which I think the bill, I don't know if you remember, but it was like 600 something thousand. It was 650000 650000 they, they had to pay. Yeah, which was a chore to actually try and get them to pay that. Yeah, um, we threatened to lock them out. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. But other than that, everybody is in, everybody's in compliance. How many people are on the books? How many firms? On the, uh, that part, I mean, roughly, I mean, it's okay. I would say individual companies, it's probably 10, but I think there's 12 or 13 actual abatement programs, and that's because one company has three. That's okay. So it wouldn't be difficult. Or two. Yeah, one company has three, and I think Medline may have two. Yeah, so it wouldn't be difficult to keep up with 13 versus what, 7,000 businesses in the county? No. Going to about like 13? Mm -hmm. um, to, to keep them in compliance, that, that shouldn't be too difficult. So, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Is, is the project that you and I talked about still on go? Actually, yeah, we talked about that um, this morning. Um, so they're just, um, it, it is still going. Um, they're, they haven't moved on closing on the land yet. I think they're trying to work through another deal that they have, but our conversation really kind of helped move that forward and they're still very interested in that site. Yes, All right. So we had a very interesting conversation again for one more time as we continue to move forward with new leadership, new direction, recognizing the past. Um, I think we're, we've got 6.9% new growth date declared and I've got to balance what the inflation was. What's the inflation, guys? 9.1. 9.1. So we're, we're doing well, and so obviously, again, one more time, here's, what is the, the county's worry? Um, and we know that our strategic plans calls for what, public safety, transportation, economic development, et cetera. And we know that. Uh, so here's where, again, we're trying to be disciplined and mature to, all right, guys, transportation inherently is infrastructure, which economic development is tied to that. Well, infrastructure begets, you know, obviously, business, business gets housing, etc. It's related. And so I'm sitting here and I'm looking like, okay, Chris, and so you're missing the conversation earlier. We said, okay, guys, now how are we going to do this? And we're, again, see, we're talking in different rooms. Like we're excited about what you said, but okay, guys, y'all know that. We have to put infrastructure in there. District 2 is pretty much built 
out. Chris, are we built out? We're getting close. <laughs> but in the scheme of things. In the scheme of things, yes. It's built out. So that means that you got to go west, which means investment. I know we're doing the studies and stuff, but again, even with that, the stuff that you got on the books, y'all got to set aside, y'all, we got to discipline ourselves uh, to put things in place. Uh, and as you know, it's a, it's a long, we're, we're not shovel ready. Our infrastructure to really take advantage of things that we could probably get. We, we miss a lot of opportunity because we just don't, our, I mean, correct me, Chris, put on the record for us. What are we missing? Just put on the record. Yeah, we're, we're missing infrastructure um, in, in the form, I was thinking, primarily in the form of sewer, um, but also qualitative, qualitatively in the form of quality transportation infrastructure to support the new development. And, and I know there's a comprehensive transportation plan, I think that's put in place. I haven't actually seen the details of that, but as we do this land use study on that corridor, it's gotta be a really solid plan, transportation plan that aligns with that. Um, I'll give you some examples of what we're experiencing as part of some heartaches right now, is the way that Riverside Parkway um, has developed, where it has created a lot of congestion issues um, and safety issues. So we brought on new development, but we didn't necessarily plan out the roadway infrastructure to support it. So I'll give you a prime example of that. So I had a meeting with one of our largest employers this morning, and a lot of that discussion centered around what are their issues that they have, and there's two primary issues. Two primary issues are this, is the intersection of Riverside and Thorn Road, and then the other part, which, which we can't control, is, well, there's two other parts, is Camp Creek in Fulton Industrial and is I-20 and 285, right? Those are the big issues for them as it relates to being able to move their product in and out. The second primary issue for them is affordable housing, which I know in our community sometimes gets a bad, it's almost like a four-letter word, but they're paying over $20 an hour for their employees in these new apartments that are coming in, they're beautiful, they're great, but a one bedroom is eight, eighteen hundred dollars a month. Right? And so what they're so, it's so here so so here here's what they're doing to solve their issue with getting people to work. They actually are are establishing buses to go to other cities to go pick up people to bring them here to work. They hope that they would live here, but they can't afford. So they're going to Clarkston, they're going to Fairburn in order to bus people in, in order to come to work. So those are kind of some of the realities. So it's, so your answer is kind of twofold. It's the infrastructure to support new growth, yep. but it's also what's, what's happening on the ground today to keep you know commerce flowing, but also to get labor in. And we know how tight of a, a labor market it is today. You know, if, you, if it's that tight and you have these constraints, you know, that are preventing people, they're less inclined to come. Yeah. Thank you for that response. Yes, sir. Thank you. I got one, if you don't mind, if I ask the question. Now, Home Shell, they're coming. They only, they have 700 jobs in Ortonia, so they must be adding an extra 100. No, they have like, um, they don't have that many. But your your son-in-law, right, works there. Craig. Yeah. Yes. I don't know if they have I don't know if they have that many, but they're um, they are shifting. So I think there are a group that is coming on, and there is a new line, a new whole product line that they're adding on to this. So one, their space was defined. Two, they're transferring some employees. I want to say it's probably a couple of hundred. Yeah. And, and that was my next thing. Yeah. We're talking transportation and stuff. They're bringing 200 people in October mm -hmm. to man the site on Sweetwater. Mm -hmm. And then another 600. <laughs> and then another 600. We're going to have a massive amount of people working in that area. We can't even support them feeding them because they're 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But those are some of the things you're going to have to look for in that area yeah. because they're coming aboard, and that's a that's 800 people. It's, I think I've, I may have said this before, but that corridor is a prime area for a community improvement district um, to be able to leverage that. If, it, if, if you could find a champion and kind of really lead it, but a community improvement district might be able to help 
support that additional transportation needs that need, that need to happen in that area. And I know GDOT has planned some things, but I haven't seen them yet. Um, I feel like they've been talking about Thornton Road in 78, but I don't know the timing of all those things. You know, Chris, you were talking about transportation. We've got all those vans out there at the transportation center. Seems like we could work out something. Um, actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Because uh, I think they tried to work that out, and it just didn't work. Um, you know, it, it didn't work for them to be able to do that. And so they're, um, I they'd be more than happy to re-engage re in those discussions. Has it been since Ron has been there? I didn't ask the question about timing of that. I just know I, they just ref, they actually brought it up to me um, that they had discussions and they just could not get it to work out. Um, but I'm pretty sure. You know, do, you, do you know what the issues were? Was it? And then they mentioned schedule um, being a, a main part of it. That schedules just didn't align. It was schedules in where people were coming from. Okay. They just didn't align. Um, so that that was those are the two things that they said. I'll give it Ron and I'll give it Chris. Sure. Just take a look at it. Mm -hmm. It seems like it could be worked out, especially if they're if they're located in the same area. Like you said, they're coming from Fol uh, South Fulton. Yeah, I think one community was Fairburn, and Fair then the other one was Clarkston. Let's see, one man might could do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what they did, they hired they, they hired a company. I never heard of this company before. Um, I wrote it down. Um, Mobility. I, I don't know who they are, but they are. I guess they're a private entity that provides services like this. So that's who they're hiring to do it. They would. They don't want to do it. But, Especially if yeah. they'll pay for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And they're paying for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another problem we have on the western side is access to I 20, especially on the Villarica end, mm -hmm. because you have that, that circular yeah. ramp, that mm -hmm. loop, mm -hmm. and then the big trucks are having to pull out and turn uh, left, and there's a hill right mm -hmm. there. Uh, we need to get that on the radar of DO, uh, George, G, G Dot. Yeah, yeah. Because and I've been talking about this for two, two or three years because I knew the, the construction was coming, I knew the trucks were coming, and that needs to be addressed where it's a straight shot ramp mm -hmm. rather than that loop. Yeah, it, it is definitely a hindrance to that area. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully, hopefully y'all can make it Friday, um, 11 to 1. We have great food, um, plenty of food. We'd love you know. We'd love to have you. Um, great opportunity. So I think right now, and, and we invite um, board commissioners, city council, board of education, state reps, state senators. We invite everyone, you know, to attend that, including our development authority boards and Elevate Douglas boards. And where will it be? It'll be at the Greystone Power Headquarters. We were going to do it at the school system headquarters, but the superintendent's out of town, and he wanted to kind of make it a big splash. So we're going to wait until the next go around and do it there. And that's in Alden. Correct. Thank you again, Chris um, And again, thank you. I know you're excited about the small area plan study that's going to take place on both the west and east corner. That will help stimulate some of the action that we're looking for toward in the very in the future as far as shovel ready and things of that sort that we need to get those areas moving, particularly that way side. What commissioners, any others, do you have anything to add to this meeting? Wow, any questions from uh, comments from our executives team? Uh, the time now is about 1.30. 130, 129, 130. Uh, thank you so much for your time, and uh, this meeting was very beneficial, and you have to get the time for the remainder of the day. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Dr.